We're here at Glenn Martin Hammond's office in Cole Run. Kevin Keithley to my right, I'm Daryl McCoy, and we do not have the maestro. We got the next best thing, producer KJ. <laughs> Daryl McCoy, listen, mm. it's, what is it, KJ the DJ? You better believe it. He's mm. locked in. Maestro's somewhere in an unknown location, but you better believe the grind session is it grinds closer to the end of the season. You know who you can turn to for all the in-depth analysis, and oh, yeah, you know, Daryl McCoy don't mind to speak his mind on a topic or two, so I can't wait for this show to get going, Daryl McCoy. No, absolutely not. It's going to be a really fun show. A lot of stuff on my mind. Yeah. And uh, it's the last uh, regular season show of the season, so uh, why not get it off my mind? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you, go. you don't want to miss this one, folks. <laughs> the, uh, but, you know, let's start as we always do with the Kentucky Wildcats. Mm -hmm. You know, our Kentucky Wildcats right now. Um, I don't know what exactly, be honest, I don't think anybody knows exactly what they are. Right. You know what I mean? Still, you know what I mean? I, I don't think they've told us what they are yet. I don't think we've got to see what they are. I think that, you know, Big Z coming, I mean, it, I don't know, you know, he come had a fabulous game to start out, but since then, Kentucky hasn't been the same. You I'll know? tell you what they are. They're a team nobody wants to see in March. Well, I would like to say that, but I've still not seen that team, you know, since Big Z's come. I've not seen uh, the Auburn game they played well. The Ole Miss. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, the Ole Miss. Yeah. But other than that, you know, I mean, uh, and a lot of it, you know, I mean, DJ Wagner. You know, I mean, you got to be healthy, and you know, he's obviously one of the key pieces because yeah. he's the Calipari, you know, typical Calipari right. player. Right. So, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm worried about the cat. Well, Daryl, you you look at pieces, components to win in March. What do you need? And 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 let's take the defensive aspect out. They have gotten better, and along those lines. But here's where you got to win in March, especially in 2024. You got to have multiple long ball shooters. Well, guess what? Kentucky's top 10 in the nation long ball shooters. You got to have penetrators and drivers. Well, guess what? They've got multiple penetrators and drivers. Now they got an Abdu back, who is a NBA prototypical small forward, physically tough, who's also a driver, rebounder, somebody they need on the wing and on the blocks. They got him back. Wagner's now back healthy, and they've got a hot teen offense in transition because when things get bogged down, uh, you're going to have to be able to have different aspects of your offense because one may shut down. You need something else to click. So that's one area where they're final four good. But Daryl McCoy, they, they're going to have to get some stops, right? Absolutely. And uh, by the way, guys, make sure you get them comments and questions. Yeah. Coach, uh, you know, we was late getting here uh, today. So, you know, we got through behind on our show prep. So we're going to depend on you guys giving us a lot of topics, asking us questions. So make sure this is a very interactive program. Yeah. But as you were saying there, you know, I mean, I just think Kentucky hasn't been the same since Big Z came in the fray. Well, that's – listen, you've said that a couple times. No. I, I think – well, okay, Big Z, I think adding three bigs more than anything kind of – discombobulated that lineup and we've talked about this Daryl and, and not college different places as well sometimes when you add a piece back or add a piece that wasn't there it kind of throws a monkey wrench into things right yep. and uh, kind of messes the the calibration the continuity of the team up and and I think that did that with Kentucky for a while but I think what coach Cal's doing and if you've noticed Aaron Bradshaw's minutes have been limited big Z's minutes have been limited you know who he's going with big uh, uh, I, I can't even pronounce his name uh, you oh, go. Yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now they're going a shorter rotation, and you saw what they did at Auburn. They punched Auburn in the mouth, and they never – Auburn never got back in that game. No. No. It, it, and that game, that was one that I thought Kentucky was going to win yeah. straight out. You yeah. thought they were going to yeah. win that yeah, game? Yeah, I, I did. Wow. I, 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 you know, I just thought, you know, I mean, it was one of them games where, you know, Kentucky wins every year one of yeah. them like that. Right. And, uh so, be interesting, you know, uh, I know producer KJ uh, is tired of hearing this because he's a Duke fan. He is, but, indeed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, we, we did have to have a Duke fan on set tonight, <laughs> but the, uh, but now. Hey, they're, they're coming along good, too, man. They're, they've won seven out of eight, so. Yeah, you put lipstick on pig, but it's uh, still pig. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I was talking good about, yeah. I was talking good about Kentucky. I, <laughs> I think, I think coach was right. What you got to have in the tournament, and they have. 
three rim protectors. Right. That they can rotate in, rotate in and out. And, yeah, if they need, right? So yeah. if one goes down injury, one goes down foul trouble, you can bring that big in. But I think they're going to have to stick with that tighter rotation as they move along now and as they go into postseason. If they do that, I think Kentucky be fine if they can keep Wagner, Shepard, and uh, Mr. Um, Dillingham. Dillingham healthy. And then <clears throat> Abdu is just a monster Daryl McCoy, he's your type of guy. Well, uh, uh, you know, I, and Bradshaw, you know, he he's probably been he's been the one that's let me down more than anything because you know I I just expected something completely different, yeah. you know, than from Bradshaw. You know, I I didn't, you know, the, obviously to me the biggest, you know, the kid I didn't expect much out of and that has been a start is Dillingham. Yeah, you know, I just you know watching him, you know, uh, during. Uh, or before college, uh, you know, playing on yeah. uh, the circuit, yeah. uh, you know, I, I just didn't expect much from him, uh, you know, because I was like, I, you know, he'll be all right, mm-hmm. you know. I, I did think there was something in me, you know, it was like, well, maybe he could be a Trey Young right. type player. Yeah. And I still think he's going to be the best pro yeah. possibly out of all these guys. Yeah. But, you know, when you take uh, Reed has definitely exceeded expectations. Yeah, you know, I think and, everybody agree on that. Yeah, I mean, what he's doing on the – when you take and look on the, you know, defensive side is really the thing that's impressed me, you know. So, I, you know, I think when, you know, it's all said and done that this team here is going to have six or seven really good pros on it. But like every team in Calipari area, it seems like, especially the last four years, you know, they don't do much here at Kentucky, you know, and that tells me that they're not getting developed like they should. And I know where me and you differ here is I think, you know, a lot of that is because these kids have grown up in AAU scene, you know, where there's not much emphasis put on defense. You know, it's uh, row the ball out, fundamental, you know, kids these days, it's not just AAU. I mean, it's even down – you know, to the middle school, the high school levels, not a lot of fundamentals being taught. You know, we we cover high school sports on a daily basis, and when you take and look, you know, I mean, just simple, you know, fundamentals in the game isn't there, you know, and that tells me it's not so much, you know, the high school, because the high school coaches are used to usually getting kids that don't need to be taught fundamentals. But now, down at the youth levels, you're not getting people that's invested like that. And the people that are at the youth levels, are about winning instead of developing these kids. So, you know, it's tough right now, you know, in the world of basketball. You know, I I do think that, you know, basketball, it's really fun right now, but I think as far as just the game, I don't think it's in good shape. I've seen a lot, McCoy. Uh, I'll say say this, um, and and we've talked about this in regards to AAU, I think it depends on where you're at because I, I can promise you with certain organizations, they, they get their guys coming in and they work with them. Um, Braxton with NYBA, Indiana Elite, now Midwest. Uh, Reed Shepard part of Midwest. Uh, he came in fully, you know, ready to go. They, they work with their guys. They got their own facility. They work. They work. Now, I agree with you. There's some programs and there's some circuits where it's, it's just up and down and it's uh, get that highlight out. Let's get that uh, at dunk fest. Dunk fest, get it out, let's go. Uh, but I think you're right to another degree is there's a lost start in developing kids at a, l- a lower level as they go up. And now you get these kids to high school and they don't know how to come off a screen. They don't even know how to set a screen the right way or why they're setting a screen this way. And that basketball IQ, not where it is, where it was it, it, 20 don't years un, ago don't understand the zone defense you know one thing that kills me today you see so many kids you know uh go to defend somebody and th- you know they'll understand the part like maybe this kid has a weak hand and they'll understand okay we need to push him left but they'll row out the red carpet left and give the kid a full track to the basket yeah, yeah. and you know expecting help to come and then on the other side of things, kids don't understand, you know, how to play a zone. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it's just you see stuff like that all the time, and that's stuff that, you know, high school coaches shouldn't have to deal with. But nowadays, you know, I mean, you have to have a high school coach that is invested twenty four seven year round. 
you know, to have success these days, you know, pretty much because, you know, these coaches, they have to make up for a lot of time that wasn't spent with these kids in the earlier days. And the parents, you know, there's no buddy leagues anymore. What's the – was it buddy league over in the West End area, the West End Warriors? And, you had like an A team, B team, and like yeah, a C team. Type and, and, you, know, know. you don't have – you know, that during the offseason, kids staying in, you know, all-stars and stuff like that, you know, it's kids automatically, as soon as the season's over, you know, let's go pay our $500 to, you know, this guy that's going to take our kid to, you know, the sports place three hours away and, you know, have get three games right, under them and no practices, no nothing. So. That was the funnest time, like, when I played in the Williamson there. Buddy League was after the season – all the coaches got together and they did like a draft of all-stars. They like picked one or two kids from each team. And then we made a team and then we traveled like an all-star team yeah. and went to yeah. like Beckley. When they had their own tournament in Williamson, Logan, uh, Charleston, Huntington. And yeah. We stayed in like the state of West Virginia, but it was fun. Like an all-star tournament we went and played every year. And I yeah. enjoyed that a whole lot. Well, Daryl, the other thing is, is, and I say this all the time, and, and, and maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it. I, not you. <laughs> I'm talking about maybe uh, if, as a parent, sometimes you got to own up and say, why ain't my kid getting better? Well, let's, let's get them off the phone during the off season. Let's get them off the video games. Let's get them off uh, the Snapchat, and let's get them off uh, all that uh, whatever's going on uh, up on top of a mountain somewhere. Get, your, get in the gym, learn the game, learn the craft, get better. And like you said, this is what does drive me crazy, Daryl McCoy. This drives me crazy. You nailed it. Paying someone five, $600, seven, $800 to be on a team – to go and play three games a weekend up at a sports place, taking away your three days to get better, four days to get better. Not everybody uh, needs to be out uh, playing uh, every weekend, Daryl McCoy. No, and a, a, as kids get older, I understand, you know, I mean, listen, I, I, AAU to me is a, a necessary evil. You know, that that's what I call it, you know, and – it's something, you know, older kids, great, you know, but I've always been a firm believer, you know, until a kid's ninth grade uh, year, eighth grade to the really good ones, you know, don't, don't lift or don't have your kids spending that valuable time they could be getting better uh, and you wasting all that money, you know, with third and fourth grade travel teams. I mean, that's just, sorry, but it, it don't, you know, it, it don't help. Yeah. What are you spending the money for? Are you spending the money just so you can say that little Johnny is like little Eddie over there and he's got an AAU team to be a part of it? Is that why? Or is it well because you want a vacation with your kids and have a good time? Some If that's what it is and it's just, hey, I want my kid to have a good time and I'm not worried about him uh, becoming a, an elite player. Okay, well, that's that's family biz bonding, right, Daryl McCoy? Mm -hmm. there, there's some advantages to that. But if you're expecting to get a player from here to here, uh, at third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, uh, traveling him around all summer, and he's not in the gym, folks. It ain't going to happen. It never will. It won't happen. I'm telling you right now, it didn't happen in the past, the present. It won't happen in the future. No, be honest. Be honest with yourself right. and say, you know, how committed is my son? Right. There you, you know, go. That's a good uh, point. Before you go and you know raise Cain and all that. You know, look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know, hey, you know, before I shell out all this money. How committed is my is yeah. my son to his craft? You know, Good point. and you know that from that point on, then you can move forward. Right. So I like that. That's just the way it is. But uh, before we you know leave this topic, you know, let's talk about uh, LeBron James's comments saying that Bronny James could instantly make the Lakers a championship Man. contender. Man. Right. Not, not not Anthony Davis, and, you know, not Rondo, not Westbrook. All these people that he's had. But Bronny James, the guy that is getting five minutes a game at USC, could change the Lakers' uh, for, uh, fortunes. Yeah, change the course yeah. of the Lakers' journey here during a uh, championship season. Daryl McCoy, I, here's the thing, right? Listen, me and you talk about this all the time. Man, loyalty, blood runs deep, it's mm. thick, but – um, little Bron knows. Listen, he's not. He's not a, a game. He's not going to change the Lakers' fortunes in terms of an NBA run. Just like we just said, to AAU parents. LeBron, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and be honest about your child. 
Yeah, I mean, that's all right. I can say, right. you know. Uh, and, and I'm the one, listen, I'm not a LeBron fan at all. I, I do not, you know, not. I, I'm hoping before he goes, it'll be the same way I was with Brady, same way I was with Kobe. You know, I never was a fan of them until the later years, mm-hmm. and then you just appreciate greatness. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that comes sometime with LeBron. You know, right now it's not there. You know, I mean, I just see too much I don't like. I don't like the load management stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't like – I mean, I just think he's weak. And, you know, but, you know, Bronny – I've always been a fan of Bronny. Mm -hmm. And I wanted Bronny to succeed. Yeah. You know, and, you know, so it it kills me to see, you know, where he's at right now. And I think a lot of Bronny's is when he had that heart condition. It seemed like, you know, his stock went straight down. And, you Mm -hmm. know, I, I hate that for him, but. He needs more time to develop. I think he can get there, yeah. but I don't think it's one and done. He's going to be a four-year yeah. player at USC if he's going to make it to the NBA. Yeah, and LeBron, you know, that's the thing with LeBron is that, you know, we all know why LeBron's sticking around. He's mm-hmm. wanting to play, and I don't blame him for wanting to play with his child, you know, but, you know, you're, he's going to end up putting expectations on Bronny that's going to crush the kid. Yeah, the more I watch uh, – uh, I wasn't sold on Bronny James uh, when he was in high school, but uh, Braxton, who stays out, my son, who stays out into all that AAU stuff and top elite players, he kept telling me, he said, Dad, Bronny's getting better. Bronny's mm-hmm. getting better. And and then I started watching. I was like, he is. So is he a bona fide Division One player? No doubt. But KJ mentioned a great point. This kid's going to need time. And, and if you give him four years – then it's it's possible he could be a legitimate NBA guy, but he's not an NBA guy yet, and he's certainly not an impact NBA guy yet. Yeah, that's uh, well, he's not an impact college guy. Yet. Right, right. There you go. That's a good point. <laughs> well, well, we got a lot of comments and questions coming in here. We got a lot of people wanting to talk about some things. So uh, what we're going to do is take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to read some of your guys' questions, and then we're going to get into a hot topic. Uh, that you know may just get my blood boiling. <laughs> so come right back and join us here on the Grind Station. If you're looking for a great selection and a great experience for your next Harley Davidson, come on down to Mount State Harley Davidson here in Del Barton, West Virginia. We have new 2023 models in stock and ready for delivery. Special financing available. Or choose pre-owned with one of the largest inventories in the tri-state area with great low prices. Visit our showroom filled with licensed Harley Davidson apparel and more. Don't write that check until you check with us, Mountain State Harley-Davidson, 61 Priest Bottom Road, or visit us online at mountainstatehd.com. If you've recently had a loved one pass, bring them to Hall and Jones Funeral Home in Virgie, Kentucky. We let you grieve in peace instead of worrying about a heavy financial burden of burying a loved one. Here at Hall and Jones, we have multiple chapels that can accommodate any size family. We look forward to helping you and your family here at Hall and Jones. Eastern Kentucky understands the importance of taking care of one another. That's why after graduation, I came home. 25 years later, I've put together a team at Glenmar and Hammond Law Offices dedicated to fighting for your legal rights. When you're dealing with a sensitive legal issue, you want someone who will take care of you as a person, not just another case. Our team will help you through the legal process of Social Security, personal injury, work injury, car wrecks, wrongful death, medical malpractice, and nursing home neglect. Call us today. Here at Logan Bank and Trust, we are committed to serving the needs of the Southern Coalfields. So if you need to borrow money, remember, we are just a click away. Here at lb and we make online banking easy. We've taken the hassle out of applying for a loan on our new website. It's as simple as going to our lb website and choosing the loan product that best suits your needs. Your loan on your time. Visit us at lb You're only a click away. So if you need to borrow money, remember, we are just a click away. It's easy to apply online at lbnt.com, and all decisions are made locally. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to the Grind Session, guys. Tonight's show is sponsored by Glenn Martin Hammond. Glenn Martin Hammond, attorney at law. The uh, if, if you're in it for the win, call Glenn, coach. I don't know there's another lawyer that's more engaged 
into the sports scene in the uh, 15th region than Glenn Martin. Glenn Martin handled one of the very best. We talked about it in depth, understands uh, what's going on in the community. And uh, Daryl McCoy, he was in here talking to us, uh, saying anything you need. He asked me, he said, Coach Keithley, you doing a camp again? I said, basketball camp? He said, no, tiddlywinks. And I said, no. I said, yeah. I said, we're gonna, we're, we may do a basketball camp. <laughs> the, uh, uh, Glenn's my guy. He, yeah. uh, uh, he's built this beautiful studio yeah. for us here. And uh, uh, you know, we couldn't be more gracious for what he's done for D and D Sports Network in the grind session. So as we're sitting here, we got uh, a lot of comments uh, and questions coming. Somebody says, uh, "Colin, uh, let's see." Kevin Stepp says, "You know, the NBA so-called experts posting are two freshman guards in the lottery. I just don't see it at the moment." Uh, Kobe Holland says, who you guys think going to win the 57th? We will get into that here shortly, Kobe, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, Zach uh, Callahan says he thinks Martin County. Uh, let's see. Andrew Evans says, I think people get wrapped up in what program or organization their kid plays, regardless of what type of practice this training is taking place. He said, I recently started a sixth grade team. But you best believe we're working, uh, we're working fundamentals two to three days a week. And uh, said he's much more concerned about helping these young guys develop than wins and losses. Said uh, he wants to get them better at the end of travel season. And uh, so, uh, listen, much respect. Yeah. You know, I've told you a million times, D and D Mountain Elite. That's that's what the important thing is. Like we're gonna win, we're gonna win ball games. But, you know, the main thing is I want these kids to be better when they go back to their high schools. Right. You know, that's the goal. Kobe Holland says uh, it's going to be good games in the 57th District. Darren Brewer says, hey there. Bryson Dahl said he watched him in Martin County. And uh, for the Sheldon Clark team, said keep up the good work, young man. Opal Eversaw always tuning in mm -hmm. here. So, uh, you know, and, and here's the other thing. I've seen, you know, we watched some middle school tournaments. And this is something that really irritates me. And, you know, in today's game, you see a lot of people that, and, and this ain't the thing that's going to get my blood boiling. <laughs> you know, we'll get to that topic here in a second. Uh, but, you know, in today's game, you see coaches that want to play eighth graders for the sake of them being eighth graders. Mm -hmm. When you look and you can see with your own eye that there's a sixth grader out there yeah. that would dog walk these yeah. eighth graders and you're playing eighth graders for the sake of it. You know, and, and, and I, I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of saying, okay, it's not his time, you know, maybe he's a year away or, you know, he's not this. So, I, I mean, I understand where they're coming from, but I have grown and matured over time, and now I realize you play your best kids. Right. You know, no matter what grade they're in, you play your best kids. And, you know, at, on the high school level, you know, I, I do think it matters. The experience factor does matter at times. You know, having juniors and seniors out there, that used to be you didn't get on the floor if you wasn't a junior mm -hmm. or senior. Yeah. And, but nowadays, there's so many kids working and so many kids doing this full time that, you know, there's younger kids that can play up two to three grades. And, you know, I, I watched a middle school game and, you know, it, the the team I was watching wasn't great. It wasn't right. a great team. But I watched some of their younger ones warm up and they had a kid out there that I mean obviously could produce. Right. Lighten and, it up. Yeah. And, and and what did not see the floor. Hmm. You know, it blows my mind, you know, how coaches, you know, these days, you know, it ain't it ain't all about, you know, the best talent. You know, it's about either, you know, how old are you? Or who your mommy and daddy is, you know, just basketball is simple. Don't make it hard. Make yourself look good. Let kids make you look good. Put your best five out there. I agree, Daryl. And what I have found uh, on the junior high level, more times than not, if you go around, especially in mountain basketball, if you go around, a lot of times it's the dad, the uncle, the cousin, the brother the uh, best friend, uh, nine times out of ten, is coaching those junior high teams, Daryl. Mm -hmm. So then there's an invested interest or a hidden agenda where, I, well, I want to play, I'm going to play this kid no matter what uh, because he's my nephew or, or he's my uh, son or he's whatever my case may be. He's, he's uh, uh, 
uh, going to play that kid. And I've, I've seen it all the time throughout junior high years. Um, and, and if you go look around, a lot of times in the mountains, even right now, a lot of them is a father, a, a son, a, 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 or uncle, whatever. It's a, it, they've got a con- uh, something going on there within that p- a program, a connection uh, in terms of uh, uh, being related. Well, I, I see a man here that I truly respect, uh, Terry Jackson, that KJ uh, probably played with when he was younger. Yeah, uh, me and Terry, same grade. Played, yeah, I played the, against him in Buddy League. Terry Terry was awesome, man. He was the same size in Buddy League as he was going into high school. You couldn't yeah. stop him. Uh, he said kids and parents get so caught up in the type of bells and whistles of it, say get better and then go back to your high school a better player. Uh, and that's what he does is Terry does classes. He comes all the way in from Ohio. Justin right. Markham has him working up there at the J&J uh, yeah. uh, training center Aaron yeah. Williamson. And, you know, he, he comes, works with these kids, and it's helping these kids tremendously. I'm actually going to take my son over there yeah. on Sunday. I'll so, tell you what, there's no better person than you want working with him than Terry, I'm telling you. Oh, I agree. And then uh, he says it's the everybody gets a trophy play in time society. He said if you're better, uh, you should play regardless of grade, age, play the best kids that help you win. Uh, Justin Markham says, right on D, middle school needs a JV game so we can get these younger kids more games. I agree. I agree. Opal Eversall says, have a great son. He's a good ball player. Said, and keep up the good work. Uh, Tanya Chafin says, my boy works with Terry and Andrew. Yes, he's, uh, he's, one, one, of the, he's yeah. one of the top young kids that needs to be, you know, he could have been playing. Right you know and and helping teams so he he's he's fits the bill yeah you know and uh but you know um as we're moving on coach i know the topic that uh that you've been wanting to uh get on and uh, we're going to talk about it uh the 15th region tournament oh, yeah okay 15th region tournament is obviously at the uh appalachian wireless arena yeah now, you know, I, I've been torn in the past. You know, I, I don't know whether I I don't know whether I stood for it or against it very strongly. Yeah. You know, I mean I personally if it was up to me it would be back in high schools. Right. But I wasn't strongly toward that opinion. Yeah. You know, I mean I was like, ah, you know, I mean if it is, you know, great. I love the atmosphere. I would love for kids to witness what that's about. Yeah. You know, I, I mean I think there's a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, but as of late, I think I strongly went to moving it back to high schools. You know, I, I, I just think that it's become a money grab. Yeah. I, I think, you know, when you're hearing, you know, I, I'm hearing that people's wanting to raise tickets, you know, to, you know, $12, $7, you know, for adults, $7 for kids. You know, uh, people's actually proposing that. Right. You know, and, you know, do you realize a family of four, you know, that right there would be, what, uh, $24, $38? 48 if it's all adults. Yeah, if it's all adults. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, say you got two two parents, two kids, you know, that's $38. You know, and then you take, of course, their kids are going to want that $4 water from the concession right. stand or, you know, that $8 $5 pop, hot, yeah, $5 or, hot dog. Yeah, $5 cookie. And, yeah. You know, so, you know, it, it, it's just, it, it's got to where, and, they want. They wonder why people ain't in the stands. Well, I mean, what family can afford that from the mountains? Uh, Daryl, I, I agree. We talked about this what for four yeah. years now, and we went back and forth with Thomas Rainey. Now KJ, we talk about what's. What's right? What's wrong? What's the best uh, way to move forward for the uh, mountains, especially the 15th region tournament? And uh, you're exactly right. You you go to one night, one night, and you're talking about okay, let's go out, let's let's go get concessions, let's uh, pay admissions, let's uh, go go out to eat. You're breaking a family bank, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You're talking about a hundred plus dollars or more if you bring a family out. That's just one night. If they advance. Night yeah. two, they oh, advance. Yeah. Night three. If you go yeah. out to eat, you're looking at two hundred. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got six nights. So if you want to go all six yeah. nights, you're a basketball fan. Yeah. I mean, twelve hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. The the, the job uh, of of the administration and the people that oversee this uh, year in and year out, it should be what can we do to make it as as uh, fan friendly, as cost friendly as possible for our student athletes in the community that we serve. We're a public school, we get public dollars, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a private school, you get 
a lot more than that through uh, private donations and things of that nature. It should be how can we serve the people of this community, especially when you know it's a uh, economy stricken community, especially the last 15, 20 years with coal dying out. It should be the first thing on your mind should be how can we help this community, not how we can absolutely take as much as we can possibly take from from the eastern kentucky people well and here's the bad thing it is they've took and jacked these prices up and then they want to blame the media these streaming services the people streaming it that's actually getting these kids promoted and bringing yeah. you know all these pe- all these college coaches in to watch these kids and they're wanting to blame them because uh well you know Oh, Bobby Sue's sitting at home not watching it, you know, on so and so. So, you know, that's why they're doing it. So, I'll tell you what we're going to do next year is we're, we're, we're going to raise it uh, to an astronomical prices. That way, you know, that nobody can even watch it, period. You know, because, you know, instead of being like, well, okay, let's get, let's get these prices back down so people in the mountains, you know, I mean, coal ain't here anymore, guys. Right. You know, and then they want to take and charge these streaming services all this money, and it, it's just got to where you're, you know, it being there is nothing but hurting the student athletes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you know, there's nobody that can afford to go out and watch five nights of it, so right. kids ain't getting that atmosphere. And then you take and look, you know, well now. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going to charge, you know, the the TV companies or the streaming services that's doing it. We're going to charge the outlandish fees so people ain't even going to get to watch it there. So who's going to get to watch this? And don't give me that bull hockey stuff that, well, it, it's played at the expo, so it gets them ready for rep. Oh, bull crap. But, you know, listen, uh, uh, go back and look since it's been played <laughs> there. How many that. teams have won games at <laughs> Rupp Arena? Daryl McCoy. I was it about to don't say, happen. I was about to say that. That, yeah. that, is no, that does not help uh, at all. Daryl, I was exactly about to say that. I said, when's the last time you've seen a team advance at Rupp Arena and make a deep run in the Sweet 16 happens once a decade, maybe. Uh, so it's not got nothing to do with the, uh, you know, the Expo isn't giving you an advantageous environment to go over to Rupp Arena. You realize Rupp Arena can fit uh, three, four Expos inside of it, right? 24,000 people, totally different environment, totally different feel. Yeah, is it a college court? Maybe. Has nothing to do with it, though. Um, I, I'm with you, though, Daryl. At the end of the day, it should be how is administrators, how is uh, the administration of each school, because they all have a vote, right, Daryl McCoy? Yep. Uh, how can we make it so that our families that we go to church with, that those kids go to school, we teach, we guide, we develop, that we mentor? How can it be our friends? Because, again, this is a um, tight-knit community, Eastern Kentucky. You've grown up. Uh, with the uh, best friends at different schools. Everybody knows one another. Why would you want to hurt the the kids that you serve by raising the prices? Guess what? Daryl mentioned attendance is down. There's been times, man, Daryl has broadcast a game, KJ, in the Expo Center to begin the region or cla- uh, or, or a, a different event. There, there wasn't 100 people in the building in a 5,000-seat arena. 100 people. There wasn't 100 people in there, Daryl. Well, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, the OA, it 100% yeah. should be back in schools. Right. And, and, you know, like the Expo, you know, I, I do, I love the people there at the Appalachian Wireless Arena. I do. I, I, I love every year being able to go and they're like family. Yeah. I love it. And, and I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm not strongly against the region tournament, but things have got to be moved around to make that you know, to make it where people want to go there. You know, like, you know, I mean, lower the prices, you know, at at the end of the day, you know, I mean, people, just the way it's set up, you know, with the concession prices and all that, people can't afford to go like that. So lower the prices, maybe, you know, take and put the curtains around the top part, you know, uh, move people down to the lower section, uh, you know, to make a better atmosphere, you know, if you're going to have it there, and then you know for the people if you do want to keep the price then you know don't don't keep the media out right. you know and, and right now what they're doing again for the media is ridiculous i mean the fees that's being put out there you know i mean it, it's astronomical i mean you go over to the 14th region and it's a fraction 
uh, uh, of what it is yeah. you know so you know then that gets people on on the wagon like well you know why ain't, you know uh, why ain't these media outlets here you know why, why are they over in the 14th region well you know i mean that they can take for a fraction of what they're paying there they can go do that and promote them kids so you know at the end of the day it's doing nothing but hurting the kids and it's become a money grab area. and you know so I, I i don't know you know what the answer is you know i i, I love the people there uh, you know i'm really i the guy that runs it i like the guy that runs it uh you know great guy but you know i, I think it's become you know it, it they've allowed certain people to get involved that gave bad ideals and bad uh i guess suggestions and it's made it to where you know it, it's just not a, the thing that everybody looks forward to like it used to be yeah it, it is a different environment now kj 15th region you know this used to be a uh you got to be there standing room only no. type oh, environment. oh yeah every gym high school gym you went into in the heyday there was no room right for every game right <laughs> and now it's just not that same feel or environment and again if you got to say guys I, we're gonna have to it's gonna cost us a hundred dollars to go to this game tonight you got to choose between that or groceries sometimes so um i listen live stream doesn't impact um attendance in the least if anything it helps broaden the uh audience it helps um and bring the rivalries it becomes a little more intense the players become a little bit more known hey i want to go out and see that kid play i've watched him play on dnd we got to get out to the gym and watch him we've seen it time and time again and uh it's it's not um kj it's not um it's not live stream that's hurt uh attendance at all it's, it's what daryl's mentioned the the price going up and the service and and, and the uh, engagement down you had a uk coach watching a JV game at Pike Central the other night. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. where else are you going to get that? You right. know? And and here's the other thing, and it's, I mean, it, it's very tough because, you know, I, I do really love the people, and I'm not going to mention where it's at, but, you know, uh, there are also district tournaments. Like, you're getting six games at a district tournament, and people are trying to charge $3,000. <laughs> wow I, I mean that blows my mind like i mean i cannot believe that that would come out of somebody's mouth you, you know I, I mean i understand like you know and especially when you know you're taking and trying to charge these media companies that donate to you all year anyways and then you know you take and uh, you know try to charge them astronomical fees like you know that's I don't know. I would have to sit there. It's like eight times what it was the year before. You know, yeah. so what has happened in that year to make something go up eight times? Oh, man. And it's certainly not uh, inflation that quick, right? No, no. I mean, I, like, yeah. listen, if that's inflation, hey, mail me to Russia. You know? I mean, <laughs> right. the, uh, yeah. but, <laughs> it, uh, but, but I tell you, man, I mean, it, it, right now, you know, there needs to be a strong look at athletics and, you know, people look at this and they don't understand that there's actually people that care about kids and does this for the right reasons. And, you know, they're like, well, you know, they got to be, you know, because, you know, we look on there and we see that they got these crazy numbers and that, you know, they're beloved by the community and they're doing all this good stuff that they must be making thousands. But they don't go and look at the company car that's, you know, uh, got that spends more time on the side of the road broke down than it does going. You know, they don't understand the 160,000 miles on the company vehicle. They don't, you know, they don't, you know, people, instead of asking, you know, they just assume, and you know how the old saying goes, you know. You can assume, but yeah. it makes a you know what out of you yeah. and me. Well, you're <laughs> right, and there I was going to say basically piggy piggyback off what you said. Four years ago, going on five. This is season five now. The ground session, KJ, and we started on a little camera. Me and Daryl started on a little camera doing the games together. Uh, listen, ladies, you know, we talked and and started this weekly show. 
uh, just for the sake, and I've been asked to do several shows over the years, join and do different shows, and ne- never uh, jumped on it. Uh, but me and Daryl talked and said, we, we want to give a platform each week for high school hoops, basketball, here in the mountains, week in and week out. There was no hidden agenda with that, Daryl. Me and Daryl didn't get a penny off this. Still, we show up every week. Daryl's here at 4 or 5 o'clock. Listen, we spend an entire evening dedicated to hoops, and you know how much we get? This, ladies and gentlemen, it's because we love it and because we're doing it for the right reasons. There's no hidden agenda here. There's no, uh, let's see yeah. what we can get out of this. It's been done because the, the our heart's in the right place. And, 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 and if everybody thought like that, then, you know, maybe, maybe uh, the expo would be sold out. Yeah, uh, in a couple that's weeks. That's it. That's it. hundred percent. So, guys, that's going to lead us to our next commercial break. We got a load of comments. When we come back, we're going to get to them. So, come right back and join us here. We will also have the top ten and the double quick players of the week. Come right back and join us. Time out for great food. This season, everyone is stopping at Double Quick for their pregame and postgame snacks, drinks, sandwiches, and dinners. Come on in and grab a bucket of Double Quick chicken with all the sides, a real family meal for on-the-go eating. Then there's everyone's favorite, the famous Double Quick pizza rolls. Buy them one, two, or six at a time. We've got sandwiches galore, your favorite drinks, chips, and snacks, and so much more. Be sure and use your Double Quick rewards card, and good luck to all the teams from the team here at Double Quick. Whether you're trying to hit the trails in style or you're trying to protect your side-by-side, call J.I. Fab in Pikeville, Kentucky. They got great deals on roll cages, rock sliders, bumpers, nerf bars, and more. Remember, for all your custom ATV, UTV parts, J.I. Fab is your one-stop shop for everything. Hi everybody, Dave Baker here for Citizens Bank of Kentucky. Do you want to love your car even more? How about putting extra cash in your pocket each month by refinancing with new low rates at CBK? It is fast, it's easy, all you have to do is log on to wearecitizens.bank. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. All right, guys, welcome back to the grind session. Tonight's show is sponsored by Glenn Martin Hammond. And we are back here, guys, Glenn Martin Hammond, and you're in it for the win called Glenn. You know, uh, as we're sitting here moving on, we got a lot of comments. White Zuspin says, are you guys continuing to expand your coverage area of schools? White, we we may do a, you know, if we do, it's probably going to be no more than 20 schools Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we don't want to get away from why we started this, and that's to give the mountains an edge. You know, Eastern Kentucky, Southern West Virginia. I mean, we've had schools in Louisville, Vegas. We've had schools in Ohio. But I don't ever want to get away from the whole purpose of D&D sports, and that's to give the mountains an edge. Yeah. And uh, now we do got a lot of schools up around the edge of the West Virginia area where we stop that we may be adding. And, you know, so I don't know as far as that. But in Kentucky, I don't know that want to go – if so, maybe in the future might add a few 13th region schools. But, you know, other than that, don't ever want to get away from the mountains. Mm-hmm. And uh, then uh, Scotty Dingus says, no school in Pike County tomorrow or Friday. Terry Jackson says, uh, KJ, he said he's still the same size. Uh, <laughs> Jacoby Qualls says, I think uh, they should let everybody in free. Well, I understand they can't do that. <laughs> but Tony and Kim Davis Smith says, should be back in the schools. Tanya Johnson says $14 a ticket for a regular season Huntington prep game. Yeah, listen, we've been to them, Coach. I mean, uh, that's that's tough, you know. Uh, but, you know, I, I can more understand that than I can high schools right. because you're getting to see the number one player in America. Right. You know, and uh, but it's still – that's still ridiculous. Right. You know, and uh, – 
Becky uh, Williamson says, couldn't agree more. Darren Brewer says, I'll pay $3 fee for that fried bologna sandwich at KCC all day. There we go, bro. Yeah. So, uh, Terry Jackson says, also want to give you guys your flowers. Should you all do an amazing job with uh, covering sports in southern West Virginia, eastern Kentucky? The kids are so blessed uh, to have you guys and uh, the service you offer. Said you all provided uh, them student athletes a great service. Keep going. Well, it's our sponsors like uh, Tanya Tug Valley Wellness Clinic yeah. that allows us to do this. Just the right. market, man. Yeah. You know, just the market attorney at law. You know, uh, Sal's Pizza. Uh, See, Opal Eversol says, uh, just look back in uh, the 70s. Matt Hager says, uh, does the pet section have to pay the same rate as regular attendance? Hmm. That I don't yeah. know. Uh, I would think so, though. Right. Uh, if, if I had to guess. Robert Timberlake says, agree, but what about the other regions host them in D1 facilities with the expo uh, has pros and cons? Well, there's... 13th hosts it in the Corbin Corner, Arena, right? Corbin Arena. Yeah. And then you got uh, Moorhead. Yeah. That hosts it. But 14th region seems to do being fine. Yeah. You know, and uh, then uh, Jacoby Qual says, I used to be all for the expo, but I hadn't attended many ball games. Now that I have high school gyms, uh, are a lot more amazing atmosphere. Cross Taylor says, I've never experienced region, the high school, but I think it would be much better ideal. Atmosphere is so much better for kids when there's 800 people uh, a thousand per, in a thousand person gym compared to 800 people in a 10,000 person gym. I agree 100% Cross. Uh, Ethan Cummings says, middle school tournaments are becoming more crowded than high schools. Agree. Uh, Randall Barker says, I uh, love the live streams in Columbus, Ohio here. Uh, Said uh, Cross Taylor said, if that's a fl- inflation, mail him to Russia too. <laughs> the, uh, so, uh, and Wes Hicks says, I really appreciate you guys broadcasting these games. I work out of town and I've been able to watch several of the games from around the area. So, uh, and Tanya Johnson says, we appreciate you guys for the kids in the area. And Linda Tackett says, you all do an amazing job. We sure do appreciate what you do. Well, we appreciate everything you guys do because we just do the easy work. You know, you guys are the ones that's hitting that share button, that's liking, you know, that's going to our uh, sponsors, you know, frequenting their businesses. You know, our sponsors and our fans is what makes this go right. around. Yeah, no doubt about it. Without, yeah. and we always say that it's uh, it's not uh, with sponsors with D and D. It's not. Hey, we you give us a. Uh, a check and and we we were out the door or a thank you and a goodbye it, it's a relationship for a lifetime and and perfect example is when we talk about glenn martin hammond right yeah uh, let, listen yeah. we're talking listen just like we're family just uh back and forth uh having a good old time it, and that's what it's about that's exactly what it's about and we got one of your favorite in here hansel bled so love said love having you guys around my whole senior year that's yes, your sir. guy I yep. love, yes sir <laughs> from west the, side the beethoven yeah west side is the best side yes, it Tupac is. said yeah the uh but now as we're going on you know one more thing before we get to double quick player of the week uh you know another thing that ticks me off is i walked in a gym the other day and I seen a kid kick a basketball, like a soccer ball, sitting back there, you know, kicking it, popping it up in the air, kicking it with his heel. And listen, guys, don't do that. Kids growing up today, I don't know whether your youth coach or your AAU coach taught you, but that's disrespectful to the game. Do not kick a basketball. You know, that, that's a cardinal sin. Yeah. You know, if you would have walked in on Raymond Justice and you would have – he's kicked a lot of balls, <laughs> but the uh, – you know, but you better not kick a basketball around him if you was a player, you know. And that that's something that kills me to see that. It kills me to walk in a gym during halftime and see a million kids running around the court. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was in school – you didn't step on that line unless you had a pair of yeah. ball sneakers. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's, it, to me, that's disrespectful to the game coach. I don't know about you, but I do not like kicking basketballs. I don't like, you know, uh, the, there's several of this stuff that goes along with it, but two of the things that I seen the other day, during halftime, you know, a million kids conversed on the court, and I'm like, you know, 
the kids are coming back out playing you know then you're going to have all that stuff from their shoes on the bottom and you know nobody cleans up between halftime so you know i, I don't know i just respect I, the game yeah look, one of the first things that um um I, I taught my kids growing up in the gym don't you don't you ever ever kick a basketball uh in the gym don't you ever kick it goofing off now like you said Listen, I, I know uh, <laughs> there's coaches that's kicked it, upset, and mad. That, that's two totally different things. Yeah. Uh, but one thing, two things I told them. So don't you ever, ever kick a basketball. Um, that you're disrespecting the game and you're disrespecting me. Yeah. And don't you ever spit on the floor and disrespect the floor. And uh, that's two things that really, really, you want to get me upset, let me see you spit on the floor that I play on or I coach on or period. that wh- whatever, Wherever there's a gym and you spit on the floor – uh, don't let me see it. It's going to get me uh, hot really quick. No, I, it, it kills me, man. I just do not like it. Yeah. But that's going to move us to the double quick players of the week. Let's go to a lighter thing, KJ. Who do we got this week for the double quick players of the week? On the boys' side, we got Brady Boggs from Letcher Central. He averaged 27 and a half points a game and three and a half rebounds. His team went three and one. On the girls' side, you got Zoe Johnson. She averages 19 points a game and 18 rebounds a game as her team went two and one. Now, Zoe Johnson, you know, putting up huge numbers. And then you go look at Brady Boggs. You know, in two games he had 70-some points. In three games he had over 100. And then last night he dropped 30-plus more. So, I mean, what this kid has done since he's come back has been unbelievable. He's had – listen, was out. Uh, he was there at the beginning of the year uh, when he faced Prestonsburg at the field house. And then a few games after that, Boggs went down. And since Boggs has been back, he's done everything – uh, that he's needed to do to help Letcher Central get back in region title contention. And my oh my, did he have a game last night, Daryl McCoy? He he dropped thirty plus, and man, he could get to the rack. He was knocking down uh, jumpers, and uh, just he he was getting it done in a big time way. He's going to be a matchup nightmare come um, um, uh, district tournament time. How about our guy, uh, David Jones, working hard behind the scenes? Just message some breaking news. Logan football coach has been hired. Oh. And it is Brandon Atkins. Yeah, the middle school coach. Yep. The uh, Brandon Atkins. You know, we got sent the, uh, the uh, well, the board agenda, yeah. and it's up on approval. Right. But, you know, if it makes that far, it's going to get approved. Right. But Brandon Atkins, listen, great dude. We got the utmost respect, great relationship with him. Couldn't be more happy for Brandon because he's one of the good guys. Yeah. So, uh, tickled to death for him. So, congratulations on that. Said uh, Connor May said, Thought on, thoughts on Martin County basketball. We'll get to that in a second. Kevin Stepp says, Shelby Valley girls might be the most improved team in the mountains, not just the 15th region. There, from start start of the year till now, I, I don't know. If I, I wouldn't dispute that. No, I, I absolutely yeah. can't. You know, listen, Jazzy Mead – really impressed me the other night when I yeah. seen her. And then, you know, they may have the best front court. Yeah. You know, when you talk about them two bigs, Zoe Johnson and Sadie Johnson. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, the thing powerful they looked at the scoreboard with Pikeful and obviously, you know, Pikeful I mean, let's just say what it is. Pikeful, you know, other than Johnson Central, they're probably gonna lay a whipping on just about everybody in the region. But it surprised me how close Shelby Valley stayed. I mean, like, it, it wasn't close, close. Right. But, but it was, I mean, yeah, they, right. was, they was competing. Yeah, yeah right, competing. Yeah, yeah, and that's something I did not see from yeah. Shelby Valley. So congratulations to Mikey Hall where he's got this squad. I, I agree. During the summer, I would not have expected them to be where they're at right now. Yeah, and, and you know, they got our girl Lindsey Baldwin coming up a rising star you know uh, she's long she's athletic mm-hmm. she's a competitor and then now uh, you got miley riddle uh, on that team so sadie johnson you know they got a future there yeah you know, I agree. So look forward to seeing what they're doing i uh, said uh gavin vance says i hope uh, this one don't uh end early uh, i don't know what you're talking about gavin the uh but as uh, but as you're sitting here, no, we still got the top ten to go yeah. over, uh, and then we got a, a bunch of other stuff. But when you talk, you know, they was talking about uh, the we'll get onto the districts in a little bit. But when you talk teams, that what team on the boys' side has been the most shocking to you this year? 
Oh, shocking. Yeah. Um, good or bad? Good or bad. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to give you one over in the 14th region, okay? okay. Uh, and I'll give you that one to start out. I'm sure we'll name a couple. I, I, I'm shocked by how well Breathitt County's played this year. I did not expect them to be top three or four in the region. Uh, uh, watching them during the summer, watching when Big Bryce was coaching them, he had them playing hard. Uh, but I didn't expect – them to be in region title contention. I thought Austin Sperry, no doubt, he's my pick for probably a player of the year, but um, just uh, he had some guys that didn't have a lot of experience. So, Breath of Kenny's my surprise team of the year. They're getting it done. Coach Honeycutt getting it done. Uh, very surprised by their performance this year. I, I'm going to go with – there's actually – there's a couple, but I'll start with one, uh, Lawrence County. Yeah, you know, I, that's a good one. I, I think Lawrence County, you know, has got theirself, you know, to where they're top three in the fifteenth region, and uh, you know, I, I did not see that. You know, I, I think a lot of people was making cases for Lawrence to be the worst team in the fifty eighth yeah. district. You know, so uh, you know, I, I think what Chandler it shouldn't surprise me because I think Chandler Thompson's the third best coach in the fifteenth region. Yeah, you've said yeah, that yes. for a while. So you know, I you know, it shouldn't shock me, but. You know, very impressed with what he's done. Yeah, that's I, 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 that's a really good one, Daryl. Lawrence County has exceeded expectations and then some. Yeah, uh, another one, Johnson Central. You know, I think Johnson Central. You know, just what we seen this summer, I thought it was a done deal. Johnson Central would be the worst team in the fifty seventh. Yeah. You know, and I, I did not see them competing this year. Yeah. You know, and they've went out, not only competed, they've won. Well, they got their self where they've got a good chance to make the region tournament. Oh yeah, they're they're in it. I agree with you on that. Johnson Central, their turn their turnaround from the summer and their evolution as a team. You look at Mr. Rose coming along, yep. unbelievable where he was to where he is now. Kudos to that coaching staff of developing uh, Kyle Rose. I, I agree with Johnson Central. Another surprise. Yeah, and uh, then um, as you. Uh, KJ, you cover over in the West Virginia side. Any over that way that has shocked you this year? Really, I, I, on Kentucky side, I, Betsy Lane. They, yeah. They've shocked me, man, because the way they spread the floor with four guards, they can take four – either one can take you to the rim at any time. And I've said it for a long time now. If they make it to the region tournament, I wouldn't want to see Betsy Lane if I'm any school. No, and they got maybe the most shocking win of the year over Martin County. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, that's a good point. Definitely impressive there. You know, now Saint um, Saint Joe on the West Virginia side has surprised me this year because look, they're yeah. number, they're the number one seed on their side in their sectional. So I mean, if they match up, well, I think it's Wahama they'll end up playing yeah. probably. And then you don't want to lose that game because the losers of that game is going to have to go to Noggy Tug. Yeah, and you don't want to be at Tug Valley. Mm-hmm. I think they're like. 11 and 0 since this started it at, at, in the region. Yeah. Oh, well, you go to Tug Valley, <laughs> you're 20 points down before you even get there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, but, you know, I, the St. Joe's, I agree 100%. You know, they got one senior on their roster. Oh, they're going to be know. tough next yeah. two years. They're all freshmen or sophomore, yeah. and their whole team. Yeah. You know, so uh, Todd Maynard has done a fabulous job there. Oh, by the way, you got other breaking news. Adam Hill has stepped down as Huntington St. Joe football coach. Mm. And wow. yeah, and uh, I'm hearing that maybe trying to uh, start a football team at Huntington Prep. Oh. So a uh, little breaking news for yeah. you guys. Yes, sir. So, uh, but, uh, you know, and when, when I'm sitting there over uh, on the West Virginia side, you know, I, I do know the strength of schedule ain't great. But I do, when you look at their record, Tulsa, has impressed me. I mean, uh, what what they've done, I don't think anybody thought, you know, that they would be competing like they are. So uh, they that, might have the best player in single A in West Virginia. Could yep, could very well. Kid average. Parker I mean, Watts. he averages what thirty eight a game. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I I wouldn't argue with that. You know, I, I don't know. I, I would have to sit and think really hard, but I don't think I know a better player in single A. I don't mm-hmm. either. You know the now. St. Joe's has a couple that's going to be up there. You well, know, Tug Kyer, Valley, Tug Tug Valley does Bryan, too. Braden yeah, Ferris. Braden Ferris. And, you know, so, you know, they definitely got, you know, some in that conversation. But, I, you know, I, I, if I'm starting a team, I may would start with Mr. Parker Watts. But uh, then, uh, you know, 
on the girl side of things, um, you know, I, well, the surprise is Johnson Central. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I cannot believe they've been as dominant as they've been. Daryl, I'm going to agree with that. I, I've said all along, I said, man, oh, man, where Johnson Central is, KJ, this year. Uh, they legitimately, a lot of people say, well, they can't store the ball. Uh, but I, I, you know, I don't know if I agree with that. I think they are good enough, good enough. Uh, if they get rolling, they can knock off Pikeville in the region. Uh, I, I think they're that good, especially defensively. Coach Hicks doing a tremendous job. Now, for me, and I don't know if it exceeds expectations, and, and I've talked about them all year, and Daryl probably knows who I'm going to mention, is uh, Brandon Kids, Prestonburg Lady Black Cats. They're 14 and 12 on the year, and nobody had those uh, had that team. Uh, they had them at the bottom of the region, the bottom of the region. And I, if you watched them play during the summer, during the preseason, you would have said this team defensively can can get it done. And and they got a big win against Pike Central, 20 on the road, beat Pike Central at home, beat Morgan County, took Paintsville to the uh, uh, buzzer. So I, I think for, also for me, Prestonburg, not that they exceeded the expectations, I think they surprised people. Yeah. And then uh, you go, Zach Callahan says that he just said Pikeville is going to put a hurting on every team, not Johnson Central. Talking about girls' action, uh, I do think Pikeville in the, uh, would, uh, I said Pikeville would put that same kind of hurting. So, you know, that's, uh, and I, I believe that I think, you know, that them two are as good as any. Just got some breaking news that we, uh, Kylie Gayhart got her 500th rebound tonight. Congratulations. So, uh, congratulations as uh, we just got that coming in. But, uh, you know, I mean, I just, when you sit and look at them teams, you know, I mean, there were a few teams that has really shocked me. Shelby Valley girls, yeah. I mean, tremendous job by Mike Yeah, Hall. I agree. Belfry yeah. girls have surprised me. Uh, yes, late. Yes. You can't forget about them, and they've yeah. been hot. That, uh, Kevin, Kevin Deskins, the job that he has done this year, you know, has really shocked me with where this team's at because and, and I think something changed whatever he did there when Jaleel Warren left the team and then when she come back they have been outstanding since she returned yeah. and whatever Coach Deskins did right there you know listen Belfry's probably the hottest team in the region I think, well. yeah, I think no. the Mapes girl bringing her up for middle school has helped out a whole lot Lexi Mapes is uh, the future of Belfry basketball mm. and then you, you got the young Kiara Woolham and yeah. uh, Colgrove Colgrove yeah, yeah I, I mean all three of them girls uh, Belfry if Belfry can hang on to them three Belfry will run the region in a few years no. so, that says uh, a lot as uh, we're sitting here guys we're going to take another commercial break when we come back we're going to do top 10, and in honor of the Maestro, we will do the ladies first. MGC Supply is your complete source for drainage and erosion control products. MGC Supply also sells services and installs Cummins generators. MGC Supply sells and delivers limestone gravel for businesses and homeowners. MGC Supply is your solution supplier and is proud to sponsor all the teams in Eastern Kentucky. 2590 U.S. Highway 23 South Pottville, Kentucky, 41501. Give them a call today at 606-433-0077. Or you can call them at 606-794-6765. This is where it all started, right here on this farm. We may have grown over the years, but we've never lost sight of what was important to us. We're continuing that tradition today, and we always will be for generations to come. This is Bruce Walters from Bruce Walters Kia. By now you know Kia is a great vehicle and you know they come with a 10 year 100,000 mile warranty. So why should you buy from Bruce Walters Kia? At Bruce Walters Kia, we're gonna change your oil for free for life. And what you do with that money you save is up to you. Come check out the 2022 Kia Carnival and the 2021 Kia Sorento. Only at Bruce Walters Kia in Pikeville. Or shop us online at brucewalterskia.com. Welcome back to the grind session, guys. This segment of the show is sponsored by Black Hawk Mining. 
Right now, if you're looking for a job in the coal fields, there's two places to call. That's Jim Mar Services and Black Hawk Mining. Black Hawk mm -hmm. Mining is having a job fair on February 24th at Chief Logan Lodge. And, uh, and listen, uh, a lot of people you know, don't realize coal is back. And Blackhawk, they're hiring green hats, red hats. I mean, if you're wanting a job that will support your family with good wages, go to this job fair. Let Blackhawk Mining put you in a job soon. Yeah, it's at yeah. Chief Logan State Park, right? Yeah, Chief Logan Lodge. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, make sure you get up there February 24th. Now, as we're sitting here, we're going to uh, – Coach, we've had a lot of people uh, uh, blowing up uh, the comment section, blowing up my messages. Yeah. Uh, and, you know everybody so uh must have struck a nerve you know, oh, tonight man. but uh as we're sitting here uh it's come to the time that mr maestro thomas rainey always loves and yeah. that's the ladies top team. yes so uh let's see who we got this week in our final regular season top 10. at number one wayne you know what? I'm going to stop here for a second. I'd love to sing that Wayne Russell game. If I would have that too, man. Down that, there. I waited for that all yeah. year, but very understanding why they didn't yeah, have prayers, it. prayers for the Wayne community. Yeah. Number one, Wayne. Pikeville coming in at two. Russell, three. Ashland, four. Johnson Central, five. Boyd County, six. Spring Valley, seven. Fleming County, eight. Not Central, nine. Owsley County, 10. Others receiving votes, Perry Central, Letcher Central, Martin County, Chapmanville, Mingo Central, and Logan. Now, sitting there, you know, the big thing that stood out to me, Johnson Central finally cracked the top five. That's where I was going to go. We yeah. finally, <laughs> uh, all season long, I said Johnson Central, Johnson Central. Yeah. They're now number five. So, I'm a happy man here at the end of the uh, uh, conclusion of the season. Yeah, well, we know our guy Cameron Morris is happy, too, uh, as him and Coach Hicks have done big things with that Johnson Central squad. Um, as I'm sitting there, you know, one thing, Wayne and Pikeville has set up top this top ten all year long. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's no surprise that neither one of them lost ground. You right. know, uh, I wish we could see a game between them two. Yeah, that would be very impressive. Uh, you know, but surprising to me, you know, Russell, Ashland, Boyd County, they just beat up on each other all year. Them three has been interchanged all year long from, you know, Ashland's been four, Russell's been yeah. five, you know, yeah. and then it's been Boyd County's been four, mm -hmm. you know, and then Russell. You know, so, uh, you know, very stronghold right there in the 16th region. But when you uh, go when you go down and look, you know, Owsley County jumping up into that right. top 10 and didn't even receive a vote last week. That's what I was about to say there. Owsley County, another one that I'm happy about seeing number 10. You know where I got the maniac mugger, the man in the middle, Bryce Hoskins is happy about seeing Owsley County <laughs> yeah. at number 10. You know, and uh, Addison Terry and crew doing big things there at Owsley County. Now, others receiving votes. You know, I mean, if I'm trying to look at one team I think should be in that top ten, maybe Perry Central. You yeah, know, uh, could I, be. I think uh, McLarenus. Uh, you Make know, a case. Yeah, love what she's uh, what she does now. The other ones, um, you know, I, I think it's pretty much how I think Litcher Central probably would have been in there if. Uh, if not for uh, the loss to Leslie. So, uh, you know, be very interesting uh, to see, you know, but that will be our last regular season top 10 here. So mm -hmm. uh, then as, as you sit and look at the girls' side of it, you know, who do you think out of the 15th region will come out as champs? Well, I think it, it listen. I think Pikeville's coming out uh, and going ahead into Rupp Arena. I think they're just uh, too stacked at each position. They've got somebody. They got a one. They got a two. They got a three. They got Tice. They've got uh, uh, Jackson. They are loaded, and they got a couple of pieces they can bring off the bench that would be as good as anybody in the region. So I think Pikeville's coming out of there. It, it would be a uh, monumental upset. Uh, for somebody to knock off Pikeville, but are there teams that can do it? You better believe it, and I think Johnson Central is one of them. I, I think there's one team that can do it, you know, and I think that's Johnson Central. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think – now, just looking at what they got, if, if say, all things stars align, 
I think Paintsful. Uh, you know, anytime you got two stars like Kenner and Priest, you yeah. got an opportunity. Um, trying to think uh, if anybody else. I don't think anybody else I would see. Uh, you know, being able to knock them off. I mean, you know, they're, they've they got that kind of a stronghold on this region. But guess what? After this year here, it starts opening them wide open back. Wide open. Yeah. So, uh, be very interesting uh, to see. You know, I mean, the 58th district, you look, they're very strong right now. You know, with what Corey Thacker's doing at Betsy Lane, you take and look uh, – yeah, what Floyd Central's doing with Chloe Crace coming back. Uh, then you go and uh, look over at Prestonsburg. You know they bring everybody back. Yeah, I mean, you know, you getting everybody back and finishing the season out the way you're finishing it. Yeah. You know, still, I, I wouldn't put it against Prestonsburg. You know, getting an upset in that I first agree. round district. I agree. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I think they're playing well enough right now to do that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, but uh, then. Uh, uh, Brandon Jackson, uh, now 14th region. Who's coming out on the 14th region? Guys? Oh, man. I, I tell you who I'm going to go with, and people probably don't agree, but I know Bryce Hoskins, St. Owsley, but I'm going to go with Perry Central. Going with Perry Central. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with you. Yeah. I think Perry Central. Yeah. The uh, You got a guess? I've not covered much girls basketball but I've heard Owsley's pretty good. Yeah, they are. So, They're producer KJ yeah. going to Owsley, 16th region. Oh. It's tough. That gets really tough, and and that, I'm more limited on that. I, I'm going to go – I would go um, Boyd County. Going Boyd. I'm going Russell. I, I've Boyd lost to Ashland twice this year by more than 20. Russell's beat Boyd twice this okay. year. Right, so, yeah. I mean, that, but it's hard to beat a team three times, though. Yeah. yeah. And don't get me wrong, I've covered Boyd twice this year at Pike Central. They are really, really good. But mm-hmm. I, I'm going to wrestle. I'm going I'm to go uh, – I'm going to go wrestle. I, I, I think Mandy Lane, she's just that caliber of a coach. Yeah. You know, I think Mandy Lane is the best uh, – mm-hmm. you know, best – well – no, Pete Fraley, you know, he's up there too. Him and Mandy Lane, really good coaches. And, you know, I, I wanted to say Ashland yeah. because with Kenley Woods and them, what they're doing. But I just think, you know, when you got a miss basketball uh, front runner like Shaylin Steele, I mean, it's hard It's hard to beat a team like that in tournament. Yeah, now. right. Because, you know, she can put you on her shoulders. Now, right. Boyd County, you know, they got Audrey Biggs and crew. She could also do that. Uh, Ashland's got uh, Kenley Woods. So, you know, who, who knows, but I'm going with Mandy Lane. Daryl, you made a really good point. Anytime you've got a bucket getter, a go-to guy, gal, you can keep it close or you can get over the hump as well. So, you're right. When you got somebody can go get, like an Aiden Barnett from a Golfing County, listen, as long as he's on that floor, you're going to have an opportunity. Now, let me ask you this. Who do you go with? Whenever you talk about um, West Virginia, you know, as far as girls, uh, what team makes it the furthest out of our West Virginia coverage area? Wayne, you got – they got five girls over six foot to start. I uh, mean, come uh, on. That's not even close, uh, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, if you're taking Wayne out, I'm probably going to go Huntington St. Joe or Chapmanville. Yeah, I like Huntington St. Joe. Yeah, you know, uh, one of them too, you know. Uh, would be the next two, but I think Wayne is a different animal. Mm-hmm. I, I, I actually, Wayne is the one team in our coverage area that I think is better than Pikeville. Mm. Uh, yeah, to it, me, it, it to lot. me, it's the yeah. size of the girls. Their yeah. guards are six foot. I yeah. mean, you got and the they got, yeah, they're twin, Atkins Atkins who, you know, And you got the freshman, uh, J.C. Simmons, yeah, that J. come C. up. Yeah. And, man, she yeah. can light it up. And Probably then, freshman of the year in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And you got. Uh, What's the girl from back home? Michaela Stacy. Yeah, Michaela Stacy. I mean, these they're good, man. Yep. They and, are talented. And then uh, they're very well coached. You add on top of that, and so. then you get them all back again next year. Yeah, I yep. mean they're, they're young. Yeah, they're they're going to run things for wow. a while. Yeah, so you know, I, I hope next year though that they schedule Kentucky teams. Yeah, or you know, they get in some showcases. How about they get it together and the powers that be at the Hatfield McCoy Shootout? 
impactful versus Wayne. I like that, Daryl McCoy. I would have lo- yeah. lo- loved that Wrestle game because it was yes. at Wayne, and you was going to do that game, wasn't you, Daryl? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we was on our way down there. That and- way these Kentucky people talk when they could actually see what Wayne, what product they put on the floor. That's yeah. it. People don't know what yeah. exactly Wayne is. So, uh, you know, at, at, before we go off this, the uh, um, – well, I'll tell you what. We'll save that for our last segment. Uh, let, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll discuss boys' top ten. So come right back and join us. Eastern Kentucky understands the importance of taking care of one another. That's why after graduation, I came home. 25 years later, I've put together a team at Glenmar and Hammond Law Offices dedicated to fighting for your legal rights. When you're dealing with a sensitive legal issue, you want someone who will take care of you as a person, not just another case. Our team will help you through the legal process of social security, personal injury, work injury, car wrecks, wrongful death, medical malpractice, and nursing home neglect. Call us today. Looking for a new health care provider? Come see us at Tug Valley Wellness Clinic. We take all patients from the ages 2 and up. Our staff has over 30 years of medical experience. We do everything from DOT physicals, wellness exams, adult and child walk-in visits, and more. Call us today at 304-236-3601 and reach us Monday through Friday. If you're looking for a friendly and fun atmosphere to enjoy your daily cuisine, come to Cheech's Pizza in Lenore, West Virginia. Cheech's Pizza has world-renowned cheese sticks, delicious pizza, and the best subs in the pizza and pasta game. Don't forget to take advantage of our milkshake shop located inside. Bring your family down to meet ours. We are the place that treats you like family from the second you pull in the parking lot. We look forward to seeing you here at Cheech's Pizza. Looking for a great selection, great prices, and a great experience on your next ATV, motorcycle, or side by side? Come check out Kiefer's Kawasaki. Our number one goal is to offer you the best power sport experience at a great price. Like this new 23 Kawasaki Terex 4 for only $17,999. Before you write that check, check with us. And remember, your adventure starts here at Kiefer Kawasaki. Route 44 South, Jerry West Highway in Logan, or visit Kiefer'sPowerSports.net. Welcome back to the grind session, guys. This segment of the show is sponsored by the Williamson Fieldhouse. Williamson Fieldhouse, May 26th. It's a poppin' Afro Man and Tootsie Row. <laughs> Coach, if you want to be part of the 30th anniversary Tootsie Row video, you go out to the Williamson Fieldhouse and you can actually get in the video. Daryl McCoy, turn my headphones all the way up. Listen, I just may bring out the spin a Rooney for that night. There you yeah, go. Yeah, we're coming back, and we're coming strong. Well, yep. hey, listen, you coming, KJ? I'll be there, oh, man. The Afro good. man's going to be here. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah go. we're coming. Yeah. The, uh, so make sure May 26th, get down to the Whips and Fieldhouse and have a great night out you know it, I, it's, it's just gonna be a fun night yeah. them two uh them two uh groups coming that's something that is gonna take everybody back to yeah, the night absolutely yeah so uh as we're sitting here a lot of comments and questions coming in uh braden jackson says boys 15th region we're getting ready to get started on that uh felt 77 eastridge 72 in boys action hmm. good win for uh phelps yeah, uh now win. in uh Jackson King's out for the season over an ankle or leg injury. Oh, I heard. Well, that's that's a leg I, I just, that, that could, no, I heard this well, the other day. I could okay. be wrong. I could have heard I, that wrong. I've not heard it. I think. Yeah. Have you? I've not heard it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I've not heard that. I'd be surprised if so if they played them you know that close without him. But yeah. the uh, Amanda Hicks says middle school basketball county tournament in Pike County at seven thirty Mullins versus. Valley, is that tomorrow? Yeah. Big one. And is that the championship? Yes, it's at Elkhorn City. You never know. It's, oh, it's at Elkhorn? Yeah. yeah. See where you see D&D at. Yeah, the, uh, you may end up having uh, – uh, Yeah, the semis were last night. I don't know. They might have played tonight. The semis were last night, and Valley beat <clears throat> Dorton, and um, Mullins beat – who was it? Oh, Millard. Oh, yeah. So, the, it, the championship game might be tonight, then, if they well, play them back-to-back. Well, let us know, folks, uh, you know, if that's tomorrow or if that's next week or what. The uh, 
Scotty Dingus says Kentucky Wildcats 6, LSU 3 right now. And Kevin Stepp says it's Thursday at 7.30. So that's tomorrow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as, as we're sitting here looking, we're getting to go into the boys' top ten here. You know, and this is something I'm interested in to see, how the season ended up. Yeah. You know, we're, which team comes out number one at yeah. the final regular season, KJ? Let's see what we got. Boyd County comes out number one. You have Pikeville at two, Hazard at three, Fleming County four, Ashland five, Pike Central six, Breathitt County seven, Chapmanville eight, Knott Central nine, Martin County ten. Others receiving boats, Lawrence County, Floyd Central, McGoffin County, Round County, Logan, Tug Valley, and Perry Central. <laughs> now, the, the thing that shocked me is Fleming County. That's – you know, yeah. climbing up there, you know, I, and it, it had me going back and looking. You know, I, I would, KJ, if you don't care, pull Fleming County's record up and see why that they was voted so high because I didn't have them in my top five. Yeah. But the, uh, as you're sitting there, and I, I look at these top three, Boyd County, Pikeville, Hazard. Um, I guess I, I, I could go with that. Uh, you know, I, I do think that Pikeville, I might would uh, take over with the way Charlie Fitz is playing right now. I might would put Pikeville at one, Boyd County at two. Well, Boyd County lost a big game this weekend, but it was somebody. I can't remember who it was. I'll look it up, too. I, I, there are, I've got Pikeville number one. I think they're playing well. I think they're cohesive. Everybody's back healthy. Um, I think they're the best team in the mountains right now, 14th, 15th, or 16th. I think they're probably 10 points uh, better than uh, anyone in, in that top 10, well, Daryl McCoy. Heath Gerald is shooting the ball yeah. really good yeah. right now. Yeah. Eli Johnson's playing as good as he's played all season. Yeah. You know, you got Ian Ox, who is a defensive stopper. You know, Versatility. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm – you could talk me into that, you know. Now, you know, Hazard, you know, we seen them the other night. You know, they <laughs> laid a butt whooping on breath it, you know. And it's this Hazard team, I don't know, Coach. I, I mean, Coach Holland, one of his best coaching jobs this year. And when you take a look, you know, to have Hazard up there in that top two or three, nobody, I, I don't think, would have predicted them to be – top three at the beginning of the year. Yeah, listen, Hazard, the job that Coach Highland's done. Uh, Evan ever saw Seth Cottle, right? Yep. Batman and Robin. When you got a one-two punch like that and you've got guys around them that can go out and get it done. I can't think of the one kid's name, uh, number four, uh, getting buckets, getting buckets. But um, listen, uh, Evan ever saw and Seth Cottle, one-two punch, as good as anybody in the mountains. You're right, they did give him a butt whooping. Uh, you, you ready for an excuse? <laughs> Bra oh, yeah. Braxton Terry was out that game and Brett it's one of those teams uh, a lot like a team we've covered a lot over the year Preston's work can't if you miss one guy things change but Braxton Terry was out against Breath it, uh, against Hazard. Now, would Hazard still probably won? Because it was a pretty good butt whooping. Yeah. But probably still would have won, but I think it would have been a much closer margin. Uh, Boyd County got beat by Harlan County. This weekend by 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so yeah. That's Harlan. Yeah, yeah, that ain't no – I was, I was yeah. just trying to think. Yeah. But the reason Fleming County is up there, they beat Boyd by five. Oh, wow. And they beat Ashland by 11. Oh. So, Boyd – so, they beat the two top teams yeah. in the well, season. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. They finished their season up at 21-8, and eight, but they beat – they've only played them once, and they beat both of them. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, hey – uh, you can't blame them there. Yeah. And they beat and they beat Russell by fourteen. So they beat Russell by fourteen. Yeah, Russell's in a rebuilding. You know they're they're young. You know they're they're going to be really good in the future. Yeah. The uh, Neil and Rimmer, I mean, outstanding uh, talent. They've yeah. only lost one game in the region, uh, and that was to Round County. Right. Yeah. That's the only game they lost. So they in lost the to Round. But they ended up they beat them. They lost at Round and they won at Fleming. But that's the only game they lost in the region. They was 11-1, and one, and they beat Boyd, Ashland, and Russell. Just a quick note on Russell. Last night, East Carter uh, was up 25 on them, ended up winning by 16. Uh, East Carter beat Russell pretty good. We yeah, saw so, East Carter a couple times. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think the 16th region is 
very top heavy. I think you got about four teams, and then the rest of them, you know, are still teams trying to get it them to come up. But yeah. uh, as you're sitting there, you know, Pike Central uh, shocked me that they're up to sixth, jumping breath it. Um, you know, when you look though, I mean, I guess as strong as they've been here of late, you know, it's hard to you know make a case against that. And you know, breath it, you know, uh, may have clicked a little bit earlier than everybody else, you know, and now it seems like that they're not playing their best basketball heading into the tournament. So you know, but Pike Central is playing their best. So I could see. Uh, Pike Central being up there, uh, Chapmanville. Um, again, you know, Brad Napper's got an opportunity to win a uh, another state title. You know, yeah. no surprise there. You know, and uh, it's going to be tough getting out of the region for him this year, though. I mean, you've got Wyoming East and Bluefield. One of them is going to be coming to Chapmanville. Yeah, yeah. I, Bluefield's the one you got to worry about. Well, Chapmanville just beat Wyoming Wyoming East by one this year. Yeah, I. I, I I, I would Chapmanville. You don't want Wyoming East to upset Bluefield and they got to come to Chapmanville. You don't want that. <laughs> I would have Chapmanville sixth. Mm. I had a Pike Central and Brady Oh. Myself. You know. That's and that's that's uh. I, I, I would. Yeah. I, you know. I, that's just my opinion. And then not Central again. You know what Casey Huff's doing with this team. You know they ain't had Jaden Huff in the last little bit, and they're still continuing to click. That's just going to make them that much better now that he's back and they know everybody else's expectations and confidence is raised up. Drake Sloan's playing outstanding basketball. I love the Braxton Reed kid, uh, the Ambergy kid, um, uh, Chance. Uh, yeah, Chance Ambergy. Yeah, uh, right. you know, I mean, he's just one of them guys you've got to have to win games. Uh, you know, and then you talk about Haddix, who's just a, a long ball sniper, a defensive. You know, he just gets down, defends, put a set of clamps on you. Uh, so, not central, I think, will be the surprise team. I think you got three front runners in that 14th region, and that's Hazard, Bretha, and uh, Not. And then, uh, or no, yeah, Hazard, Bretha, Not. What and about then, Perry? Well, Perry and Letcher are right there together. You know, I'd probably go Perry in front of Letcher and then Letcher. But, you know, when, when you sit there, especially once Letcher gets Peyton Dixon, it, he's coming back in region. So, uh, you get him back. I don't know. They won't have time to play with him right. much before then. So, that's the thing that worries how effective can he be. But when you take and look at the way they played uh, last night and they played the last few games before that, you know, Matthew Taylor has his team playing really good basketball right now. I would not want to run into them. Breaking news, breaking news. Daryl McCoy, 14th region, shaking in your boots, right? Peyton Dixon, probable for the yep. region tournament. Listen, I'm telling you right now, and before I get there, I do want to compliment Coach Casey Huff. I'm a huge fan of Coach Casey Huff. The job that he does, he is a basketball guy. He develops kids. He is 24-7. A basketball guy, yep. my type of guy. He's a coach of the year candidate, not County Central. Far exceeded my expectations this year. But coach Huff knows the type of fan I am of his and the job he's done this year. But I just want to tell you right now, even without Peyton Dixon, down at Powell County in the 14th Region Tournament, I promise you, Letcher Central could get out of Powell County and get to Rupp just because of the guard play, Daryl McCoy, and how they rebound the basketball. And you wonder why uh, Dixon was such a formidable force on the glass. You go look at the other two guys we saw last night. Yeah. I mean, they're they're attacking glass yep. all Terry night long. Terry Delaney yeah. is a stud. Yeah. You know, and uh, when you're sitting here, you know, and then Martin County rounding out to 10. Listen, Martin County – Jason James, he, he had this happen last year when they went on a seven-game losing streak right, right at the end of the year. Right. You know, and everybody counted them out. This year here, they've had such an up and down season. I mean, it's been one thing after another. You know, they lose to uh, Betsy Lane, they beat Hazard. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just been up and down, no consistency with them. But knowing what he's done these last three years don't don't forget jason james has two region titles two. you know and and there's only uh two more guys that's got right, that right. you know and that's tommy mckenzie and elijah justice yeah. you know so uh you know when you take a look at martin county's you know starting five 
and then you add Bryson Dawes in there, mm-hmm. at, at, you know, at that six man spot, it's going to be hard to find a better six than that group. I mean, I mean they definitely am got the I think the best two wings. You know, uh, combination of wings, McKenzie yeah. and Hill. Yeah. You know, and then you take and, and you look at Sturgill who can play that point forward. Yeah. And then you got Peyton Davis who, you know, I mean, he is just a gritty defender that gets in you. Yeah. Know, uh, you know, can be a three three ball threat. And uh, who am I missing? Uh, Devin Maynard. Yeah. You know, super athletic, can do multiple things. And then, you know, you got Blake Maynard if you need it size off the bench. And right. Sturgill. Yeah, that's what yeah, yeah. Stur- Sturgill is is he's the most slept on player in this region. Yeah, you know he people don't realize they think you know well they look at his size they're like oh, you know he's just a uh, back to the basket yeah. you know big doing this no he's actually a point forward that can handle the basketball he can take you off the bounce he's got he's got a really good outside game I mean I love. Sturgill, and, you know, he, he's a kid that has, you know, far exceeded my expectations and may be my biggest surprise of the year. Yeah, we saw that last year in the region, uh, what they done, Martin County, KJ, it, pulling him out, uh, pulling Pikeville out, yeah. Sturgill passing, knocking down shots, pulling Fitz or another guys away from the rim. Martin County is that roller coaster team this year because of injuries, because of other things, and but – as always, Coach James has them ready right at the right time. Yeah. And here we go again. Can they get to Rupp and make it three region titles for Coach James? Yeah, they played GRC close. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, But when you're sitting here looking at the others receiving votes, Lawrence County, Floyd Central, McGoffin, Rowan County, Logan, Tug Valley, Perry Central. Out of that group, who's the two best teams in that others receiving votes? I think uh, Floyd Central – would be my my pick uh, for uh, uh, who who'd you? There's Lawrence County, Floyd Central, McGoffin County, yeah. Rowan County, Logan, Tug Valley, Perry Central. Uh, Floyd and McGoffin County. That, that's the two I believe that are the best of that group. I'm gonna go if it's just comp- yeah. I'm I'm gonna go with the same two. I, I I think those are the two. Now Rowan. Uh, yeah, right there. They, they come up. Yeah, I'm trying to think if they beat Floyd or Floyd beat them. We covered it. It was a very close game. Yeah, I can't remember who won, but Rowan County. I mean, they got some really nice pieces. So you know, I, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if they pull an upset yeah. in the 16th. I agree. I, mean, I agree. They're good enough to do that. So as uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, when we come back. We're going to have our final segment, and we got some good topics. Yeah. You don't want to miss this. If you're looking for a great selection and a great experience for your next Harley-Davidson, come on down to Mount State Harley-Davidson here in Del Barton, West Virginia. We have new 2023 models in stock and ready for delivery. Special financing available. Or choose pre-owned with one of the largest inventories in the tri-state area with great low prices. Visit our showroom filled with licensed Harley-Davidson apparel and more. Don't write that check until you check with us, Mountain State Harley-Davidson, 61 Priest Bottom Road, or visit us online at mountainstatehd.com. If you've recently had a loved one pass, bring them to Hall and Jones Funeral Home in Virgie, Kentucky. We let you grieve in peace instead of worrying about a heavy financial burden of burying a loved one. Here at Hall and Jones, we have multiple chapels that can accommodate any size family. We look forward to helping you and your family here at Hall and Jones. Eastern Kentucky understands the importance of taking care of one another. That's why after graduation, I came home. 25 years later, I've put together a team at Glenmar and Hammond Law Offices dedicated to fighting for your legal rights. When you're dealing with a sensitive legal issue, you want someone who will take care of you as a person, not just another case. Our team will help you through the legal process of Social Security, personal injury, work injury, car wrecks, wrongful death, medical malpractice, and nursing home neglect. Call us today. Here at Logan Bank and Trust, we are committed to serving the needs of the Southern Coalfields. So if you need to borrow money, remember, we are just a click away. Here at lb and we make online banking easy. We've taken the hassle out of applying for a loan on our new website. It's as simple as going to our lb website and choosing the loan product that best suits your needs. 
your loan on your time. Visit us at lbnt.com. You're only a click away. So if you need to borrow money, remember, we are just a click away. It's easy to apply online at lbnt.com. And all decisions are made locally. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. All right, guys, welcome back to the grind session. This segment of the show is sponsored by Jim Mar Services. Jim Mar Services right now, they have any kind of job you're looking for in the coal industry, they are hiring for it. Uh-huh. And if you do have a coal mine, they also sell uh, sell equipment, fitting, stuff like that too, right, did you? Yeah, they're, Jim Mar was primarily like a roof boating, so roof boat supplies to the mines to support the top. Now they've got into contracting services for coal miners to number mines. one contract. Yeah, they're service. yeah they're number mm-hmm. one. So they're growing, and re- <coughs> recently I think they just bought some uh, plaster services that helps do seals and plaster stoppings. I mean, they're they're getting into everything. They're a really really big company, and two of the best guys that we know work for them. Richie Belcher and uh, Eric Coleman, and uh, now they got Danny Oliver up there. Yeah, with Danny, them. I forgot so, about Danny. Yeah. You know, got uh, three great guys leading the show up there. So, I mean, it would be a true blessing to be part of Jim Mark. Yeah. So, <laughs> as we're sitting here, we got a lot of comments. Scotty Markham says, Caden Hell from Tug Valley can bust them threes. You absolutely right. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, hell yeah, that kid. <laughs> uh, can absolutely knock them down. Uh, Ronnie Jude says Martin County is going to take number three uh, of the region this year. Uh, Billy Davis said we 10. Uh, yes, you was 10. Watch uh, out. The, uh, <laughs> as, uh, as you're sitting there, I, I mean, you know, just by Kobe Holland says can't miss Duff. Uh, he was one of the best before he got hurt. Absolutely. You know, kid was a mismatch nightmare. Yes. You know, and uh, but you know, uh, I mean, sitting there, I don't know if he was asking that or no, if, he was know, saying it in a surprise, yeah. As we're 10, yeah. Uh, but as you're sitting there looking, I mean, bring up their schedule, KJ Martin County, yeah. As you're sitting here, you know, I, I mean, beat Floyd Central in a big time game last night. I agree, I, I think Martin County's the second best team in the region, and I think it's clear, you know, I think it's think it's powerful, and then I think it's Martin, County. yeah. You know, and I don't even know who really. I mean, like it's A and B. Like I mean, I think they're that close right. to Pikeville. But when you're sitting there looking, you know, at the season they've had, you know, and then they're coming off. I, we all know it was a loss, but although I mean, I'm not into moral victories, but they played DRC close. Mm-hmm. You know, but in voters' minds, they still see that, you coming off that loss. Yeah, that's true. You know, so you want me to go through their yeah, schedule here? Yeah, yeah. Do, do the last. Uh, the, uh, what's the the big wins that they got? Uh, they beat Huntington Expressions Prep by four. They beat Knott County Central by six. They beat Merced California by sixteen. Uh, some team out of Reno, Nevada, by thirteen. Some team out of Texas by twenty. Ohio County by six. That was at Ashland. Uh, they've beat Johnson Central, East Ridge, Shelby Valley, Betsy Lane. Then they lost to Pikeville. And then they won like seven straight. They beat Paintsville, McGoffin County, Tug Valley, McGoffin County, not Central. Yeah. Um, Pretty dang good. Yeah. Uh, they beat Hazard. Uh, Paintsville, they lost to GRC by nine. So their last – Eight games, they beat McGoffin County, they beat Knott County Central, they beat Johnson Central, they beat Hazard, they beat Paintsville, and they lost to GRC, and then they beat Floyd Central by five. Yeah, that that's the – and then, uh, you know, but the thing is, is, you know, they're – I think the early season losses, they had to dig themselves out of them hoes because at one time – they only they was like seven and something. I mean, yeah. it, it, you know, I I think they might have even been below five hundred at one time, and they've had to dig theirself out of that hose. So I think that's why they're at ten. But if you ask me straight up, like you know, uh, them playing the top ten, I would probably take Martin County in just about every game, but maybe two of them. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they had to play through losing their point guard. That's your heart. I mean, your point yeah. guard. I mean, they lost him at the beginning of the season. They had to get uh, Peyton Davis over yep. the point guard position they're and Bryson Dawes. And they're, they're getting accolated and adjusted to playing with each other. And then you can see they went on, what, 110 of 11. So, I mean, and yeah. playing some good teams down the stretch, too. And the big thing is 
they're the the two point guards are two completely different styles, yeah. so the teams are having to play completely different style. Had to adjust. Yeah, I, I always called it that when I coached uh, in Louisville. I had Anthony Epps and a kid named Bright Northern. Anthony Epps played for Kentucky. Bright Northern played for University of uh, Louisville, and I called them the uh, Salt and Pepper point guards uh, because Anthony Epps was I'm going to run the show for you, coach, and Bright Northern is it's showtime, coach. So yeah. I could bring my second five for Bright Northern and. We we just go with him, and Anthony Epps is going to control tempo. So that's kind of like Peyton Davis and, and uh, Duff. So Peyton yeah. Davis is more of that we're going to control things yeah. and we're going to run things in a half court in a very disciplined way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he's going to run the show, yeah. not many mistakes. Right. And Duff's just going to come out and yeah, make you just, look silly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, definitely uh, see uh, that in him. And so, you know, Martin County, I mean, listen, it would not surprise me if, if – they walk through the region. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're the, they yeah. they are that good. Yeah. You know, but you know, then uh, you know when you when you sit there, well, uh, the only two teams that you know would even I, I'd be like, well, if would you take Martin County or them? Uh, probably the Pikeful game. I I don't know uh, who I would take in that game right now. You know, but I think Hazard on a neutral court. You know, I might would take Hazard. Yeah. You know, but you know the uh, you know I, I I wasn't there. I don't know, but I heard that uh, you know they uh, some pretty good home cooking in the Hazard game. <laughs> so you know, but maybe somebody somebody yeah. can tell us a little more about that. The uh, said Double A in West Virginia is wide open. Timmy Mead says I agree a hundred percent. I think Double A is wide open. I think Three uh, A I think is pretty closed down. Fairmont Senior. Yeah, I think Fairmont Senior is going to win that. And Four uh, A probably Morgantown or Spring Mills. Yeah, I'd probably go Spring. I, I think uh, uh, or I think Shady Springs is the best team in the state of West Virginia. Do you? Yeah, I, I honestly do. I think they're the best team in the state. And uh, Class A. I think it's Tug Valley's to lose. Well, they got beat by Tucker County yeah. this weekend, but that was at Tucker County, and they, I think they only made. Three field goals after halftime. What I mean, I think that's what I heard. It could be wrong, but they was up at halftime. And Tucker County was number one. Tug Valley was number two. And they were up at halftime. But you got James Monroe that's really good there, too, in Webster County. So, it, that single A's a toss-up, too, I think. Cody Holland says, what do you guys think about Johnson Central? Listen. Um, I think you better watch out the next four years. That's what I, 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 I agree. <laughs> there are, listen, I've said it from the beginning of the year until now. The job that Tommy McKenzie's done, getting those young players together, they've got – and I'm talking about 15th region alone. I'm not going to go into every person I think is a 15th region player of the year candidate. There's, th- there's two that's ahead of the other three or four. But, listen, when you've got Austin Sloan and you've got Braden uh, Shepard – Yep. You've got two guys that can get 20 every single night together. Mm-hmm. They're elite scorers. I don't care that they're freshmen. They're elite scorers, and they're elite players. And you've got a Kyle Rose now who's playing the right – oh, my goodness. Playing outstanding right now. Johnson Central could upset almost anyone maybe outside of Pikeville and, and Martin County. And those, I agree 100% you know. with you, a 1,000%. Yeah. And, and I'm telling you right now, if you guys – the kid – uh, do not be surprised if one of the kids in three years that's running the 15th region's name is Mason McKenzie. He'll be one of yeah, them. Yeah. That kid is dangerous. Yeah. You know, I've been very shocked. When you watch him run J, a JV game, it's very impressive, you know, just how in control he is. And, yeah. you know, I mean, he makes every big bucket. You know, him combined with Cooper Blair, that's a really nice duo. Right. So, you know, Johnson Central ain't going anywhere anytime not, soon. Not at all. <laughs> and I know a lot of fans are, the, oh, my goodness, the sky's falling and on Johnson Central. Then you got Central. the Callahan yeah. uh, twins. Right. You know, right. them two are horses down yeah. low. Right. They're, they're, you've got a, a, already a group that's now ready to compete. Now, are they good enough to beat the Martins and the Pikevilles? Five seniors for Pikeville. You've got five, nine freshmen on the roster for Johnson Central. I don't know if they're there yet, but can can they yeah. Uh, they could because you got – again, I think Austin Sloan, would he be mentioned in a 15th region player of the year poll? Yeah. So you got a guy that, that can go get you 25-30. I agree 100% there. And Dagan Rash has got a question for you all. Who is in the running for improved uh, improved in the region from last year to this year? Most improved team from last year to this year. That's a good question. 
I'm from last year to this year. I think it's Phelps. I, that's what I was going to say. I, I think. I think it's Phelps. I, I, I think what Cameron uh, um, has done over there is, uh, I, I just he's got Phelps to where you they're not just a walk uh, walking apart now. I mean, you, you, if you got Phelps on that schedule, you know you got to play. They no. got a true uh, kid that can give you twenty and twenty on any given night in Tyler Weddington. Mm-hmm. You know, then you got Nick Knox, Nick the Quick. You know, when you take a look, and then you got their role players that have stepped up. I I I agree. I agree, Tim Fode. I think Phelps is the team that's improved the most from last year. You know, uh, you're right. Uh, I was thinking about who moved the, who moves the needle, who can compete against the big dogs, and but. I think you're right, uh, both of you guys. I think Phelps in the 15th region, yeah, when they walk in, it's not, okay, it's Phelps running clock time. Yeah. No, it, it's Phelps. You better make sure you're ready to go or they can they can cause you problems. Yeah, they might still be in the bottom five in the basement yeah. of the 15th yeah, region. Yeah, but there's yeah. – But, yeah, they're, they're – you know, it don't matter who's played them. They know they got to play that night. Right. And they're going to have to battle to win that game. Yes, right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Phelps uh, – Phelps would be that, you know, and um, well, Westside's one of the best teams in that section. The region of Chapmanville is, and Phelps beat them down there at the Fieldhouse. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, Phelps is that good, you know. I mean, they they're a very good team. You know, if they have one or two more pieces, you know, I I, I really like what Cameron Smith's doing over there, and I think Phelps is going to be a team that's going to continue to grow because Cameron. You know, he's going to do what it takes to win ball games. I can promise you that. Well, he takes pride in where he's at. It, yep. I, I always was told as a young coach, they said, listen, uh, you you walk and act uh, wherever job you're at at the moment like uh, it's a million-dollar job. You're making a million dollars at this position. I always took that to heart. I was like, man, you're exactly right. Where I'm at is where I'm going to, I'm going to embrace it to the fullest. He's doing that at Phelps. And that, that, that passion, that enthusiasm, that energy – it comes across, and you want to be a part of that. Yeah, a hundred percent, guys. We uh, we we got uh, we're on our last segment. We got uh, we got about twenty minutes here uh, that we got to kill. So, uh, what, we want you guys to get your questions and comments in. Make sure you keep them feeding in. But I want to get your uh, just like we done on the girls' side. Winners of the uh, we'll go region by region. So we'll start with the 14th region who wins 14th region <laughs> I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go with uh if all's healthy at powell county i'm gonna go with uh uh the uh, 14th region champs i'm gonna go with breathick county to re, re-, re- Shock. Tank. right Shock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm going with the hazard bulldogs yeah yeah i, I listen I, I i think you know you gotta you got to beat them to, you know, at the end of the day, what they done the other day. I know they didn't have Terry, uh, but, you know, I, I just think one of the biggest improvements has, okay. has been the big fella down low, yeah. and that's um, – uh, Higgins? Higgins, yeah. yeah, Kenyon Higgins. You know, he, you know, a lot of people think ever saw him call him, but they don't realize that Higgins controls the game yeah. down there. Yeah, You know, and uh, love, love the way that he plays the game. How, oh, how about this? The uh, Connor Morgison tuning in. Okay. Yeah, we we've been talking about you all year, young man. The uh, yeah, the uh, Connor Morgison. Uh, no, we will next week. We will name our middle school player of the year. So uh, want to stick around see uh, who's that? You know, Connor Morgison's definitely going to be uh, in the running for that. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Connor Morgison, Andrew Terry, Coda um, Dalton. Yes. And uh, let's not uh, Nick um, Prater. Yeah, Nick Prater and uh, Colin Andrew Collins. Andrew Collins. Yeah, uh, and, your, your Buck. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. There was one more there. Uh, Buck, right? Yeah, Wesley Buck. Yeah, and so, you could th- you probably throw Colton Ratliff in there. Yeah, Colton Ratliff. Yeah. I mean, listen, he's been he's been a surprise. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, we knew what he could do because we seen him do it last year mm-hmm. at our All Star game. Yeah. By the way, guys, April twentieth weekend, he'll be the day's weekend. 
you want to get out to the D and D Exposure Weekend, All Star Weekend. Yeah. So make sure you guys get out uh, for that, and uh, because like Coton Ratliff, that's why we were so high on him because his performance in that game. Yeah. You know, and you know he ended up getting to play the next game, uh, got to play up because oh, yeah. of his performance that's in right. that game. Yeah. So uh, as you're uh, sitting there, so 14th region, who you got? 14th hazard. Hazard. So two hazards, one breath. It. Uh, let's go to the 16th region. Mm. I'm going to go with um, Ashland. Ashland. I'm going Ashland. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Boyd County. I think. Uh, you know, I, I, I just uh, – the big difference is the Ellis kid. And I, I think if, you know, Ashland throws everybody else off because of the style they play, and if there's anybody that knows that style, it's Boyd County. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I, I'm going to go Boyd County. Yeah. Now, um, let's go West Virginia. Oh, no, I, actually, yeah, we'll go West Virginia. What team will be in it the longest in West Virginia? Tug Valley. I I, th- I think Tug Valley, but let, let me listen. And I and I love uh, Mr. Ferris, Braden Ferris. I think he's a good player. I think they got a host of uh, uh, talent over there. Uh, but I don't think there is um, dominant KJ is what I thought they would be this season. I I don't think I, I think they could somebody can knock them off. That just my opinion. I've not seen them as much as you guys, but I, I expected more out of them this year. And, and believe me, they're really good. Yeah. Don't fans don't get mad at me there. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, I'm going to say I, I, I want to go tug because I think uh, single A is the weaker of all the classes, but I just it's hard to get me to bet against Brad Napper I mean he's done yeah. it so many times so I'm going to go Chapmanville yeah. what gets me with the Chapmanville is because there's so many teams in double A that are all right there Yeah, there's nobody it. that stands out that's up here it's just, they're all right mm-hmm. there so anybody can knock anybody off and that's why I think that but that's where the Brad Napper effect well that's in. true that's yeah. when coaching comes in but, uh, but I will tell you this Right now, Logan playing some pretty good, damn good basketball. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you take and look at what Hoopy Wimpson has his team doing, Matt Hatfield's playing great right now. Mm-hmm. And what may be the most underrated player, uh, you know, in uh, McCormick Gilderton. Oh. Yeah, in McCormick Gilderton. And then you got Clancy. I mean, uh, they just got, you got Zay Sherrod. You got the big Ivan Miller. And, and the, the kid that's been sh- shooting the ball lights out is. Um, Help me out. Okay, Clancy? Good. No. Um, the Buzz uh, oh. kid, uh, that one player of the game. Blankenship. Yeah, Blankenship. Cole Blankenship. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I mean, he's been playing lots out for them. I think Logan makes a state tournament. I looked at their sectional region. Scott's down this year. That's who yeah. made it out of there last year. So, I think Logan makes it. And they're the one seed, so they're going to be at home unless they get knocked off and have to go. I can't remember who's on the other side, but they'll be at home the whole time. They got the one seed. Oh, yeah. Somebody I forgot about. Uh, we definitely got to mention this. Uh, Madison Sammons. Uh, Hyman won the state title. Seventh oh, grade state title. Wow. Big time. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. to them. Uh, Bringing it back to the mountains. Yep. And was it Betsy Lane that made the final four? Uh, lead eight in, that I know uh, of, right? In, uh, in eighth grade. They, they yeah. Uh, I, final I, four? I could I could have been wrong. I thought I, I thought I seen Final Four, but I could be I could be wrong. Somebody let us know on that. And uh, uh, Hyman actually played another mountain team in Ashland yeah. in the finals. So, right. You know, either way, the mountains is coming back with a state yeah. title. Right. So uh, then we got uh, Brendan Jackson says, "Who did you have in the championship? If Martin and Pikeville are in the same bracket, uh, let's see who is uh, going to step." Uh, Jacoby Qualls, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but Brendan uh, Jackson says, who do you have in the championship if Martin and Pikeville are in the same bracket? Well, uh, listen, if Martin and Pikeville's in the same bracket, I got Pikeville on one side, then I'm going to have, as of now, Floyd Central on the other. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to have Pikeville on one side. No, I'm going to go Martin County. 
I'm going to have Martin County on one side, and then I'm going to have on the other side. Oh, wow. upset city. Yeah. I like it. And I tell you what Coach James is doing right now. He's saying, guys, go clip what Coach Keithley just said. I want you to go put it on the TV <laughs> and keep it on loop and replay 24 hours a day when they come in that locker room to motivate them. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, listen, KJ made a good point, too. And I've said this all year. I'm telling you right now, Floyd Central and Betsy Lane are similar. And how they play if on a bigger court – they knock down shots. I, pr- I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, you can see Betsy Lane going to Rupp Arena. Yeah, or Floyd Central. Yeah, Floyd Central. Yeah, both of them. Man, I got to cover both of them. Floyd Central against <coughs> Huntington Expressions Prep the other night. They lit it up. Yeah. Man, they're, and they're healthy. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, uh, he- Heinemann is back-to-back state champs. They won in sixth grade, too. Oh, wow. So, congratulations. Uh, yeah, congratulations to yeah. that young team. Yeah. Yeah, love seeing it. Casey Huff's got to love that. Yeah. You know, but Floyd Central is a team that, you know, Listen, they shoot the ball. You seen them last night. They, uh, I can't remember. Uh, it was a high scoring yeah. game there uh, that they scored. It was like 90 something to 80 something. You know, it's going to take somebody to put some points up, you know. And now, if you can slow them down, then I, I think you got a chance. But, you know, you better hope Dylan Boyd ain't hitting. Uh, you know, I think right now they're clicking on all cylinders with uh, Braden Moore coming back, Chris Spriggs. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, he's, he's running the point guard position as good as any point guard in the region right now. Yeah, he's playing well. Yeah. And, His uh, best basketball is a, as a high scorer. Yeah, I, I agree. He's not making many mistakes at all. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing is he's he's dominating the team, the games from the point guard position, and that's been the most impressive thing. I still think when it comes down to it that it's going to hurt him not having a big man. You know, yeah. uh, Ronnie Sammons, he, he does so much for what he is. But at the end of the day, you know, he's still an undersized big. Like, he's a three having to play a five, yeah. you know, and it's not fair to him, but he does it well yeah. and does it effectively. The one thing I say Floyd Central's got to do, and, and I'm sure Coach Moore agree, and uh, they've done it all year, is they don't help well on drivers. So if you've got an elite driver like a Jalen Rigdon or a Luke Kell or, or Betsy Lane, not, or listen, anybody that has an elite driver has success against them on the offensive end. Floyd Central going to have to figure out some different schematics to take away dribble drivers, especially as they get deeper in a postseason. Brandon Scott said, what about Lawrence County on the other side of the yeah, bracket I, instead of Paintsville? Well, you know, and we've seen Lawrence County get beat. Oh, whoa, no, no, no. Mine's Pike. Mine's Pike yeah. Central. Yeah. You didn't ask me. We I forgot all about Pike. I think, yeah, if, yeah. I think if Martin and Pike was on the same side, I'm going with Pike. I, I'm going Pike Central. And then on the uh, other yeah. side, I'm going Pike Central. Yeah. I, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I forgot. Just, you know, it yeah. went through my mind. I mean, yeah. I, I was thinking, you know, and if it wasn't Pike Central, the other thing, I mean, you know, you're forgetting McGoffin County too. Yeah. You know, and uh, but you know, I, I think Pike Central. I, I think that there's three big dogs in the 15th region. I think that's Pikeville, Martin County, Pike Central, and then I think you got two others that are you know teams that's right there on the edge of that. And I think that's Floyd Central and McGoffin County. Mm-hmm. And then I think you got three dark horses there in Lawrence County, Paintsville, and um, Betsy Lane. Yeah, Betsy Lane. And I, I think, you know, those, that would be the pecking order that I think, you know, that I think it is. And then I think, you know, after that, you know, it would have to take, you know, a, a big miracle for any of the other teams to knock off. I, I, I think that it's so close that on any given night that the rest of them teams can knock off one of them, but I don't think the other ones can win three in a row. Yeah, three in a row is going to be tough for if you're not, a uh, as you mentioned, Martin, Pikeville, Pike Central. going to be tough. Uh, I, I do want to mention uh, Lawrence County. They brought up Lawrence County. This I know. 
it, Lawrence County's never, and we watched this in me and you called the 58th district last yeah. year, and we saw time and time again how they came back from big deficits. This season, uh, we saw time and time again down 10, they was down 10 plus with two minutes to go against Prestonsburg, came back and won that game. Lawrence County is, they play so hard and they play so together that you can't count Lawrence County out. That they, they can beat anybody on any given night how they compete. It's the Chandler Thompson effect. He's he's. Nah, no, I'm telling you that the man can coach. Yeah. You know, and and Gunner Woods, uh, you know, him coming back is a big shot in the arm for that team. Yeah. You know, so because now, you know, I thought they was one piece away. Yeah. And now they got that piece. Yeah. So you know, I mean, don't it wouldn't surprise me if Lawrence County's there. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me one bit. The uh, so as you're sitting here, uh, looking, uh, just. Uh, you know, right now, the way things stand, player of the year front runners. You know, and you get one player of the year in each in each one yeah. we're mentioning here. We'll go with girls first, 14th region. Oh. Um, oh uh, a young lady from... Uh, 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 Perry Central, the uh, um, McLaren's. McLaren's. Uh, yep. I said that Kyra la- last week. I said that last week. Yeah. yeah. You going Kyra McLaren's? Uh, I to, I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna go Kiera Couch. Yeah. yeah. From uh, from Letcher. Yeah. Letcher. Yeah, Letcher. yeah. I'm gonna go Kiera Couch. Uh, the fifteenth uh, region. Fifteenth region player of the year. I, I think it's probably a foregone conclusion. Just a lot of times when it's already built up over years, I think Trinity Rose is gonna knock that down and, and be player of the year. Yeah, and, not that she and she deserves it. Yeah, she she absolutely deserves yeah. it. And uh, you know, I, I I think if there's any year that you do co, I think you give it to her in Thornsbury. You know, because Thornsbury's having a really good year, putting up really good numbers. But I think what you know, just gross accolades. Yeah, of what she's doing, and obviously getting that McDonald's All American uh, nominee. That I I think that may lift her lift her up and you know she's going to southern miss care thornsbury's going to jacksonville state couldn't go wrong with either one but i i think rose gonna win yeah i agree trendy row now now uh 16th region there i'm not as, as astute as you are on the 16th region on the girl's side so i'm going to defer to you i'm going to go shaylin Steele. yeah from wrestle and she's a player of the year uh she's miss yeah. basketball, basketball. Yeah, I, I think she yeah. she'll be miss basketball too yeah. you know i think other than that it would take audrey biggs or kenley woods yeah. upset. yeah uh, but uh now going over to our west virginia uh who's the player of the year in west virginia Who you got kj girls yeah i think it's uh what's the girl from mingo central she's like the league Addie school. yeah Addie. That's mine, yeah. Addie Smith, because she's lighting it up. She's like the leading scorer, top scorer in the state almost. Yeah. I'm going to go Brooke Atkins. You got Wayne. Wayne. So, I'll, I, listen, I'll go – I know more about Addie Smith, yeah. so yeah. I'll go with Addie Smith. Addie Smith is deadly. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the little girl coach, she's probably five foot – what, four? Yeah. Five foot uh, – yeah. probably five four. But she can and, get her shot. Yeah, she scores 30 a game. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. She, she's the second coming of Greg Davis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, the uh, – so that uh, – Kevin Stepp said Carly Smith in the 15th, uh, or in the 14th, uh, Roe in the 15th, said hard to knock Roe out of the 15th, Otis Atkins says. Let us know your guys' thoughts, too. Now let's go over to the boys' side. Let me just say real quick on Kevin Stepp, man. This guy is a basketball he knows encyclopedia. Stuff. He knows his stuff, whoever Kevin yeah. Stepp is. I just want to give a shout-out to him. I don't know him, but you see him all the time yeah. on there. Very and, knowledgeable. Uh, yeah, and the uh, and speaking, you know, right now we got three college coaches tuning in. Yeah, yeah, and, just another uh, day on the D and D Sports Network. Yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, we got Coach Ty Compton tuning in. There we go. We got Coach Charlie Pack. Yes, sir. And we got Coach Tom Johnson. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when you sit there, three college coaches. Yeah. Tuning in. As hey, listen, that's what it's yeah. about. And you know, all three of them you know always tune in and uh so we appreciate uh that and uh like i said any show you watch on D is going to have 
you know, it don't matter whether it's games or shows, we're going to have five to six college coaches watching with you. A hundred percent. I say it every time before we get on the boys. This is not no hype, over-exaggeration. Uh, every night, there, uh, I know there's two college coaches tuning in to certain games because they're on the phone talking to folks. Yep, there you go. The uh, So, uh, you know, Sullivan College, UPIC, and KCU, you know, hey, that great places yeah. for any kids right. to go. Yeah. So, uh, as as we're sitting here at Boys, let's, let's jump over to the Boys. Let's go 14th region. Or, or let's go West Virginia first on this. Player of the year in West Virginia on our on our code here. Uh, so you're talking about you want to whittle whittle it down to for the D and D Sports Network Player of the Year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's going to be one represent yeah. each region, okay. and West Virginia is a region. Okay. So I'm going to go with uh because uh, I'm going to go with Zion Blevins. That's what I was going to say, Zion. Yeah. I, you pike commit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to go Zion. You know, I think you know a lot of people's going to be. Uh, Startled by Parker Watts' numbers, but you know, I, I think at the end of the day, I think Zion uh, deserves it, and I think he'll be the Player of the Year in West Virginia. Yeah. Now uh, going over, um, let's start uh, 16th region. 16th region is uh, Mr. Xander Carter. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah. Xander Carter. That's mine too. Yeah. I think Xander Carter represents the 16th. Yeah. 14th region. They. It's very. You already know uh, my guy, Mr. Austin Sperry, high flyer, Mr. Elevator Man. Yeah. And you going with Sperry? Sperry, yeah. I'm going with Aversaw. Yeah. Oh, you broke the – yeah. I, I think after watching them head-to-head the other night, you know, I, I think what Aversaw does for his team, I, I it's hard because, you know, you take both of them off their team, they're going to struggle. Yeah. You know, but, but, you know, I just – Aversaw, you know, I mean – Offensively, defensively, you know, they depend on him so much. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I got to go with him. I, I, I think he's earned it in the 14th let, region. Let, let me ask you this, though, Daryl. Uh, okay, if you, and I'm not debating Evan Eversall, unbelievable year, but if you take Evan Eversall off Hazard, you take Austin Sperry off Breathitt County, and mind you, you've got some talent over there at Breathitt County. But if you take those guys off each other's teams and they go and play their schedule this year, uh, who's still the more dominant team? Hazard. Hazard's the more dominant team. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I, I still think Eversol, what he's done this year has been, you know, like people expect, you know, Sperry to do it, you know. And I, honestly, I, I've been more impressed with Sperry because of his maturity. I think he's grew. But and and like I said, you know, I mean, this it, you can't go wrong with either one, you yeah. know. But I just, to me, my vote, I, <laughs> I think ever saw because I, I think that people expected, you know, I don't think they expected Breathit to be that good. The uh, you know, but I also don't think people thought Hazard would be top three either. And when you take and and look, you know, I, I do got to go, you know, head to head. You know, look at the performances head to head, and whatever saw done the other night, you could tell he wanted that ball game. And you know, he come out and he flat out battled in that ball game and got his team to victory. So that's why you know that ball game is what decided. It. You know, I was probably leaning towards Perry before that game, not not much, but if you hadn't picked one, but after that ball game, you know, I, I just think that. Ever saw done enough in that game to say, okay, you know, th- to me, that man earns 14 region player of the year. And that for you, that seals it up, wraps it up, uh, no matter what happens postseason no, play. No, no, I mean, that's just right now. Yeah, okay. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, okay. I'm just saying where we at right now. Right. You know, because there's still, you know, I mean, th- this, you know, we won't announce ours until. Right. Our, you know, ours is later than yeah, other yeah. people. Our, ours will be, you know, during the state tournament. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, you know, that's just my who I would do. But you know, I mean, like I said, Sperry, you know, could come out and you know, if he leads Breath it to a fourteenth region title, then you know, I think he may overtake him. But right flip now, flops. Yeah. So but uh fifteenth region. Mine's Rigdon. Jalen Rigdon. 
Gosh, and man, we, you know what? And it's been a ride with Jalen Rigdon. Uh, one of our first grind sessions was right here. And uh, not one of our first grind sessions here at Glen Martins, I should say. We already been doing it for a year. And we had a young Jalen Rigdon going into his freshman year on the grind session. So we've been here with him every step of the way, KJ, following his career. And I'm as big a fan as they are of uh, Jalen Rigdon. And uh, man, oh man, it's tight, it's tough. Um, Daryl McCoy, I might, but I'm going to have to go with um, Aiden Barnett. Aiden Barnett. Man, it's hard when you look at Barnett's resume. Yeah. You know, it's hard, 3,000 points, and, you know, but I, I got to go with Rigdon. You know, I, 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 I think that, you know, right now, if you ask me, it'd be Rigdon. And I, I think Barnett has to have a good region tournament. Yeah. You know, to get – he has to get to the region tournament. Right. Let's say that. Okay. You know? And, you know, because right now I don't think Barnett's ever been to the region tournament. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, so if he gets there, that will be something that may secure it for you. Right. You know, and in the voters' minds. And then, you know, I, I'm telling you, I still uh, – you ask me two weeks from now, I might say Charlie Fitzer. You know, I, I don't think there's a more dominant player in the 15th region than Charlie Fitzer. You know, right now, he just, on the defensive end, he is nasty. You know, I mean, he's protecting the rim. He's playing smart. He's not fouling. I mean, you look at what he's been able to do this year with his size. You know, pe people, like I said, you know what I mean? Powerful, you know, they don't – Powerful don't get seen as much because, you know, we don't get to cover them as much right. or we don't get to do their home games. But I'm telling you, Charlie Fitz, the numbers he's putting up, a double-double with seven blocks a game, I mean, that's that's pretty dang impressive. It, it's you know, a, yeah, so go ahead, Darrell. Uh, I, you know, it, it's one of them three. I think, you know, Fitzer has to have a game like he had against Martin County in the all A. He has to have them kind of games throughout district and region. Yeah. You know, to do it. You know, I mean, just absolutely drop step and dunking everything he has. Yeah. I think if he does that, he still can pull it out. You know, but right now, if you ask me, I'd go Rigdon. Yeah. I, I think there's, and listen, I, I, you cannot go wrong with anybody saying, hey, Charlie Fencer, uh, could he be a player of the year candidate? But by all means, the only thing I say, I think at times during the year, uh, Fitzer. Um, I don't want to say disappear because he never disappears. But I, I don't think he was from start to finish as, um, you know, rigged in 25, 25, 25. And not the points matter. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about just overall numbers every single game out. I, I think that those two have a hedge uh, above Fitzer. Fitzer's had a great year. He's had some tremendous monster games, and I'm a fan of his, big-time fan. Uh, uh, see, here, here's where I would – I'm not, you know, at the end of the day, I think the most complete player. And I, I, I think when you go and look, Rigdon and Barnett has to have 25 to 30 a game. That's true. If fits or don't. Fits That's or true. got help. Yeah, he's got help. You know, and not saying that they don't either. Right. Because, you know, Rigdon has Jaden Stewart, right. you know, uh, who is unbelievable, may be the one that wins it next year. But, you know, when you, when you take and look, you know, Pikeful is well rounded. They got five guys that can step up and give you points. You know, yeah. so I and and I, you know, Luke Hill would be the dark horse, but I, I still, you know, what he's doing, I don't think any of the other guys are that dominant. Like he is a game changer. You know, you take him away from Pikeful, Pikeful's not doing what they're doing. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, well, I'll tell you, they got E.B. Walters. I mean, so he 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 wouldn't be. Exactly what Fitzer is at this point, but he, you know, but you know, you take the other ones off their team, it would be the same thing. You know, they would struggle too. So I don't think you'd go wrong either way. I, I just, I think you do have to look at the dominance of the player. You know, has to, you know, somehow creep in there. And you know, the way he played against Martin County, if he plays like that every game, he's the region player of the year. If he plays against like that every game, right? You know, but who knows? And then. Uh, the uh, Chris Briggs says Rigdon is one of the few guys that can get a bucket anytime he wants in the region. Yeah, I he's, agree one, he's one of them. Yeah. I agree 100%. Otis uh, Atkins says uh, uh, Jones Oil's finest said uh, 
uh, you're going to have to invite Kevin Steph on one time. And uh, yeah, we may do that. We may bring him on one time and talk some basketball. Uh, I said, Rigdon, defensive ball handler, uh, speed, uh, hard not to go with him. Otis Atkins says, Grant Hall, defensive player of the year, hands down. The, uh, Grant, I, I, listen, I, 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 I like watching him play. I'm a big time fan of Grant Hall's. But I listen, I, there's another guy on that Pike Central team that can flat out guard and uh, his, his former teammate at Mullins is Peyton Owens. So you got two there, as you could say, could be in contention for a defensive player over here. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, what Grant Hall, Grant Hall's been one of the most improved players, period. You know, I, right. I, I, I mean, uh, like, well, I didn't expect Grant Hall to do what he's doing this early. You know, I, I knew he, he was going to be a really good point guard down the road, but uh, did I see him having the impact that he would have this year? No. I mean, honestly, at the beginning of the year when they put him in, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, you know, I mean, you know, right now, you know, he's a liability out there with his size. And then – as the year went on, and then when I seen him at the Williamson Fieldhouse, you know, it, it, he's at his size. It, he's, you know, he his heart matches or makes up for the half he's missing. You know what what he's doing has been truly remarkable. He's, you know, if you have me to pick, you know, five to eight guys for defense player of the year, he's in the run for sure. Yeah, you know, uh, fits her. You know. I, uh, there was a kid, uh, who, who was I uh, uh, thinking the, uh, you know, the kid last night that Letcher's got the Taj Higgins, you know, Dang, really good man, Higgins, uh, yeah, he yeah. can guard. Uh, you know, uh, right now, you know, uh, if, if uh, it's going to be hard to beat McCormick Gilberton. Yeah. You know, to, to me, you know, McCormick Gilberton uh, may be the best defender. You know, I, I think you know you you got a lot of good defenders around the region. Yeah, you know, uh, a but lot there's of good a, ones. Or you can talk about a lot that aren't talked about. Yeah, I mean, uh, you talk about the Haddocks kid at Knox Central. Yeah, you know, uh, unbelievable. And then uh, you know, uh, Eversol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. yeah, I mean, for him at his size to be able to guard every position on the floor like he can, right? That's impressive. Uh, then you go. Um, Trying to think, uh, Cam Blevins at uh, Chapmanville, uh, then at, at Tug Valley, uh, you got Ashton uh, Davis. You know he's in there. I think Martin County, you got Peyton Davis. Uh, I, yeah, Peyton Davis, you, you guy there on D and D Elite. Yeah, I mean I think he's up there. And then I mean I got to mention my son in that. You know, I, and well your son. I, I mean the, the job he's done. I was getting ready to say there's we uh, there's two guys. I think the I'm just gonna say I, and this ain't nothing. This ain't daddy this daddy that. I think one of the best. <laughs> backcourt defensive duos that I've seen consistently throughout the year that causes havoc. Jackson Estridge and, and, and Braxton have done a tremendous job. Jackson, yeah. you're right. Uh, we talked about it early in the year, and I think Coach Parsley even gave a nod when we were on the D&D Sports Network uh, when you were talking about the Lathan uh, Hall Award. We were doing a game. I think it was at Letcher we were doing a game, and uh, he said, Lathan Hall Award, make sure you mention Jackson Estridge. So even his coach gave him a – a nod on that. Yeah, so. I, I think he definitely belongs in it. I think, you know, what he does for his team, you know, is uh, something that, you know, don't always show up in the stat book. But, you know, uh, you know he helped, he's one of them kids that you got to have to win ball games. Yeah. You know, and uh, and I agree with you. You know, the duo of them two may be the most – the best defensive backcourt. Um well, Spriggs and Moore. Yeah, I was uh, gonna, also a yeah. dang good one. Yeah, this what, the region's yeah. full of good guards. Yeah. man, it's crazy. Yeah, and, and Parsons and Pinta. Yeah, yeah. Parsons <laughs> and Pinta. That, as I was say, it, it, when you talk about, you certainly got to include all them. And it, it, listen, you could pick it one way or the other, yeah. whether it's steals, off the ball, on the ball, ball pressure, however you go about it. But those three or four teams, uh, those three or four backcourts certainly got to be mentioned as top defensive duos. Chris Spriggs mentioned Pinto. So, yeah, that's what I was about yeah. to say. Yeah. You know, and that's coming from one of his peers. So, yeah. uh, Kevin Stepp says, Ian Onks the Pikeful, yes, is his right. choice for defense. Player. That's a good one. He says his yeah. light length and uh, his spe- he's very special defensively. Uh, Otis uh, says, who's freshman of the year? Whew, that's something we'll have to save for another day. Uh, yeah. But, 
you know, when you take and look, you know, I, I, I think you got, you know, if you had me narrowed down right now, is, does that say in the region or in our coverage area, freshman uh, of the year? I don't know if you're talking about region or coverage area, but if you're going in our region, I think it's I think Austin Sloan or Braxton Keith. That I was think. that that was my two. Yeah, it's I, either Austin or Braxton. I, I, I'm, and I'm, they play two totally different positions. One yeah. Braxton had to play point this year, and, and Austin's a small forward, so you get two different looks uh, as a player. And, and listen, I tell you, a, a team that has two that's really surprised me is Brock Woods and Ethan Cole. Uh, yeah. You know, Brock well, Woods what about been, Tyler Weddington? Yeah. yeah oh, yes, Tyler I mean, Weddington. He, he's uh, got to be up there. Well, yeah. He's got to be in that, like we mentioned earlier, when you talk about group of finalists, Tyler yeah. Weddington's got to be in there. Yeah, I think Tyler Weddington, uh, you know, and um, I, I think Sloan, Keithley, Weddington, is the three, and then Woods and Cole and then belong got, in that group. And you got Lawford as well. Yeah, Lawford <laughs> played outstanding. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, so, so, you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting to see. Now, I, I know I'm forgetting. You're probably forgetting. Listen. I'm forgetting one. Well, uh, listen, let's name like, like Zade Rash has had a really yeah. good year. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what – yeah, Rash is definitely, you know, his, his thing that's going to hurt him is his record. Yeah, you know that's the thing that's gonna gonna end up hurting uh, Rash. But yeah, I mean, when you talk, you, you can go top freshman, and he's definitely oh, the, you know, an yeah. elite. Yeah, freshman. when you go back to yeah, the, but yeah, but if you just want player of the year, the year that they've had, um, you know, I, I I think those would be the ones. Uh, and I, I I'm missing somebody that really. Uh, shocked me, and I, I cannot remember who who the freshman was, but there's there's another one out there that really impressed me, and, uh, and and you know who else has had a good year? Is all, all been steady and solid for his team is uh, Hayden Perry. He's had a oh yeah, yeah. Hayden Perry. Yeah, yeah. I mean uh, Hayden Perry's a kid that's always in the right spot at the right time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's always Johnny on the spot. Yeah. So, uh, you know, all these awards we will have later, uh, except uh, freshman Corey Flincham, hands down, Darren Brewer says. Uh, Weddington has made Phelps a team that uh, can win on any night. Uh, obviously, Flincham. Uh, Where does he play at? Wolf, Wolf County. Well, that's we're, just not, we're talking about 15-3. Yeah. So we're yeah. Not. yeah, but when you talk in our coverage area, you know, I, I think that them two, uh, Creech and Flincham, definitely are in that conversation. Uh, uh, what in Flincham at like Jackson County last Jackson year? Jackson City. Jackson City. Yeah. So. I, I listen. I, I have I have his dad on Facebook. I, I love Flincham's game. I love Creech's game. I love Hacker's game at Leslie County. Um, I, I don't know if you, you could say hands down um, for anybody over in the fourteenth region over uh, the 15th region guys you can certainly make a case that, that they belong in those finalist conversations yeah and you know I, I think the 15th region is strong is the strongest and yeah. then in the 16th region Elijah Neal and Caleb Bremer those are the two yeah them them, yeah. them two unbelievable yeah. aren't they on the same team same team yeah, yeah. and then in West Virginia Makai Eram yeah, you know, yeah. He, he's the other big dog yeah. so yeah. You know, you guys want to definitely let us know your guys' thoughts as uh, as we got this next Wednesday. We will be in the midst of, I, I think right now we ain't streaming anything, so we will have the show next week. Hey. So, you know, uh, you know, make sure that you guys stay tuned in. If not, if something changes, we will get uh, – we will take and move it to a different night. Yeah. But we will definitely have a uh, – region tournament uh, show before the region tournament yeah and uh that way we can also announce the middle school player of the year yeah and uh then you know we'll see where we're at as far as these player of the year races and where each team is at so uh, uh darren brewer says he was overthinking uh over all the coverage area no problem darren we appreciate you saying that because flincham was definitely you know in 14 region i don't think it's close <laughs> you know i think it's flincham but uh Guys, until next time, we hope you guys enjoyed this show. We want to thank Glenn Martin Hammond, uh, Black Hawk Mining, the Wimpson Fieldhouse, Jim Mar Services, Tug Valley Wellness Clinic, Justin Markham, Attorney at Law, South Steakhouse, 
Double Quick, and all of our fine sponsors, guys. For Coach Kevin Keasley, Producer KJ, and Daryl McCoy. Till next time.